Welcome to John Gets Games. Today, I'll be doing a full three-player playthrough of The Flow of History. Now, I'll be teaching this game as we're actually playing it, and I would like to mention that this game was selected to have a playthrough made by the voting level supporters of the Patreon campaign. Now, what's going on in this game is each player starts off as a civilization in antiquity, and they are going to progress through time all the way up to modern day as they draft cards from a central tableau. Now, if these cards don't have prices on them, you instead need to figure out how much those cards are worth it to you because you have to worry about your opponents sweeping in and trying to steal those cards away from you. Now, before we actually get into the game, I would like to mention that if you enjoy this video, uh, that you please consider clicking the like button down below as well as the subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to directly support the channel and potentially vote on future playthroughs like this one, please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the game. Out here we have the game fully set up for our three different players. Uh, as you can see, the main part of the game involves this row of cards that are face up. We have a draw deck right here and then a discard. And it's also worth noting that this is the deluxe version of the game that I backed on Kickstarter. And it's also worth noting that these little cubes here don't come with the game. I'm just putting them down here so that it's easier for me to remember which uh, color we all are because we are going to be using these uh, tokens to claim cards. But I think at this point I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. We're going to be playing as the red player. So let's go ahead and start off with our turn. Now the main thing that we're going to do for our turn is take a single action and then do cleanup and then our turn will be over with. Now for that action there are five different options available to ourselves but for the start right here I'm only going to talk about one and it's the main one and it is an investment action. Now we each have one of these investment tokens and we can put it next to one of these cards as long as it already does not have an investment token alongside it and then once we do that we can spend some of our resources to try and bid on that card so that we will potentially get it in the future. Now what this means is none of these cards have a specific price on them. We get to dictate the price that we think that that card is worth and hopefully it will uh, stick around. And I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second, but for now, let's go ahead and claim, I think, this card right here, or at least invest in it. And the reason for that is because if we look at this card, it says working animals, and it has this little exclamation point, which means that if we were to take this card, we would immediately evaluate this bonus action. Now the action says that for every one of these agriculture symbols that we would have, we would get to gain a resource from the reserve, which is over here and out of play essentially for the game. Now the reason this makes sense for us is because we started the game with this agrarian tribe starting card, and it also has an agriculture symbol down in the bottom right. So that means if we were to take this card, we would have two of those symbols, and we would be able to grab two resources out of the reserve instead of just one with this card. And it also means that none of our opponents are as incentivized to grab this card right here. So I think uh, when we consider all of that, we now need to try and pay for this. And we could start off, you always have to pay at least one resource down here, but it's important to know what our opponents could do against us. Now, another one of the action options is you could do a snipe action where you essentially pay the uh, resources that are indicated on a card that was invested on by an opponent, you pay those resources back to that opponent, and then you take that card. So that means if we just put one resource down here, then one of our opponents could give us one resource and then just take this card right away. Now this is important because when you do a snipe action, you get the card for a single action. But when you are investing, that costs an action. And then on a future turn, it costs an entire action to collect a card. So essentially two actions is the normal uh, way that you actually gather these cards. So I think we want to try and incentivize this so that, or I guess disincentivize it from our opponents sniping it out from under us. And I figure that probably the best way to do that would be to put three of these resources down. Now, our opponents do both have four resources, and if it wasn't obvious, I decided to put our banks of resources up along here so that it's very easy to see how much everybody has to make sure that they are uh, maybe not going to want to snipe us. And either way, if we have three, we think it's unlikely our opponents are going to want to go over here, especially considering this card is less good for them than it is for us. So with that completed, we can now go into the cleanup phase of our turn. This one is really quite simple. If there were any empty spots on this row, we would draw a card from the top. And this deck right here has five different ages worth of cards. You'll see we started off with the A cards here, which are Antiquity. Then next up we have the age one, and then it goes all the way down to five. And then the other thing that you do in the cleanup phase is you check to see if the game is over. And that's going to happen if the very last card in this deck, which is called the future, comes out onto this row, or if anybody grabs it through other means, then the game will end. And we do check that during cleanup. So obviously the game is not ended and we have no cards to replace, so our turn is now over and green can now take their turn. When it comes to the green player trying to figure out what they're going to do on their turn, they're also going to consult their starting card. They can see that they are the craftsman tribe, and the only thing that matters on this card for them is this little icon of a hammer down in the bottom. 
Now this is the industry icon, and you may notice on these cards out here, there are also these little magnifying glasses on every single one of them. Now the icon within the magnifying glass is going to be an investor bonus, and whenever a player takes one of these cards, they are going to gain resources from the supply, not the reserve, uh, equal to the number of that icon that they already have. Because of this, the green player decides they want to invest over here in the barracks because the investor bonus is indeed a industry symbol, which, uh, as I said, they already have on their card. And now they have decided they also want to try and be a little safe here. They're going to go ahead and spend three of their resources. They could spend four, but you know these resources are good for sniping other opponents or trying to pay for future cards. So they're going to go ahead and put three right down here. And they are now going to do cleanup, but there's nothing to actually clean up. So their turn is over, and now the blue player gets to go. Just like the rest of us, they have a starting card, and they are going to use that to consider what their options are as well. It looks like this one is a seafaring traders, and the icon on the bottom is a shaking hand symbol. This is the trade symbol. Now, when they look at the rest of the cards on the trade row, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the market row, they can see that none of the investor bonuses have to do with trade. And because of that, they've decided to be a little bit aggressive, and they're going to start things off by sniping. Now, they have decided to snipe the green player's investment over here. And the way this works is the price that is um, on here is going to be the price of the snipe. So that means the blue player needs to spend three resources and immediately give them back to the green player for the uh, privilege of sniping this card away. Uh, this investment token is going to come back to the green player's area, and then all of these resources are going to get put over here into the supply. Now, again, it's worth noting that this is a supply, which is where all of the resources of the game are going to cycle into, and these over here in this trough are the reserve, and there's just a couple times in the game where these will come back out. So now that these are over here in the supply, the uh, person who was sniped, and in this case that is the green player, will check to see how many trade symbols they have. Again, this is the handshake symbol, and right now the green player has none. If they had any, then for every one of those symbols, they could actually take one of these resources back into their area. So that means that the blue player, starting with one of these trade symbols, is actually more resilient to being sniped themselves, although they are being a bit aggressive right now. Now the next thing that happens is that the player who was sniped on gets to take half rounded down of the resources that are over here in the supply. So that means that uh, half rounded down is just one, unfortunately, for the green player. So this is going to come back into their area, and they no longer have access to that card. And they do have one more resource than they had before, but now they're kind of regretting not putting all four of their resources down over here, because that way, if they had been sniped, they would have ended up with more resources, or maybe they just would have been less likely to get sniped. Either way, they have now been paid off, and the blue player can now grab this card and put it into their tableau. When we come down over here to the blue player's area, they're going to go ahead and put this orange construction card right over here. Now, there are six different types of cards in the game. The blue ones are the government cards, and all of the orange ones are construction. Now, this is important because in the future, if you take another card that matches a color that you already have, then you are going to stack it on top of the previous card, covering up everything except for the symbols down at the very bottom. But for now, they don't have to worry about that. Uh, this card comes into play, and we can see the ability right here has an infinity symbol, and this just is going to provide them one shield, which is plus one defense if they were to get attacked. Now, the other thing that they need to evaluate is the investor bonus. Now, we know before that the green player wanted this card because they had a hammer, but we can look over here and see that the blue player has a trade and an attack symbol, but none of these industrial hammers. So as an investment bonus, they get zero bonus. So with that, they are now done with their action. And this means that they're now going to do cleanup. Now, we do have an empty slot, so we're going to go ahead and draw the top card from the deck. And this is going to be the first of the Age 1 cards. We can flip it over and see that it says it is a Republic, which is a government-style card. As an ongoing ability, this uh, provides the player who has this with two trade symbols. And down here on the bottom, you can see this little um, a harp. That is the culture symbol, and every culture symbol that you have in your tableau at the end of the game is going to be worth one point. And it's worth noting that every other type of symbol that you have in your tableau is going to be worth half of a point. So with that, the blue player's turn is now over, and now we can go. Well, when it comes to different options, we essentially have one. Uh, we have a single resource available to ourselves, and there is nobody that can be sniped. Also, it's important to note that once you have invested in a card, you cannot invest in any other cards until you have pulled your investment token back. And you do that by claiming a card, so let's go ahead and do that now. 
So this means that we are going to grab this card, we're going to put it into our Tableau, and all of these resources that we spent are going to go over here into the supply, and this pool is going to start to increase. So as you can see, there might be times where when you get sniped and you have to take half of the resources in supply, where you won't be that upset about it. <laughs> but either way, uh, that has gone over there, and now let's go ahead and evaluate this when it goes into our Tableau. We can see that this is going to be our first knowledge card because we don't have any other green cards in our area. And as soon as this comes down, we can evaluate the investor bonus. We can see a little science light bulb symbol within this magnifying glass. And unfortunately, we have none of that symbol in our tableau. So our investor bonus is going to be zero. And now we can go ahead and evaluate the action on this card. So as I mentioned before, if it has an exclamation point, then you evaluate it immediately after putting it into your area. And this is going to be a one time once per game effect. So as I mentioned before, we can now count up the number of these harvest symbols that we have. We have two of them, and for each harvest symbol, we can grab one resource from the reserve, not the supply. So we're going to grab them from over here and add them into our area, and this is important for a couple reasons. The first is that we now have two more resources, which we can use on future turns. Uh, it's certainly better having three than one for a future turn. And the other thing to note is that um, resources will come out of the reserve a few times throughout the game, but they will never go back into the reserve. So that means that the overall amount of resources for the ecosystem of this game has just increased by two permanently. Okay, we can now perform the cleanup for the end of our turn. We can pull another card out, and this is going to be another construction card. It is a lighthouse, and this has an ongoing benefit of giving the person who has this a science as well as an industry icon, and then permanently down at the bottom, there is a trade icon right there. All right, it's now the green player's turn, and I figure it's probably time to talk about these three cards before we move any farther. Now, this first one over here says Warriors, and it is a red military card. Now the ability right down here has this little axe on it, and this means that the player who takes us into their area can attack a single one of their opponents. Now the way attacks work is that the person who is aggressing is going to add up all of their attack symbols, and for reference, this uh, barracks has one down here. It looks like a spear and an axe, just like that. The next thing that happens is the uh, everyone else is going to add up their defense value. Now this is going to be the number of these attack symbols as well as the number of these shields. So it's a little bit easier to defend, and as long as the attacker has a larger attack value than anybody's defense, then in this case they can steal two resources from that person. The next card over here is a Wonder, and you'll notice that this is kind of on its side. It's in landscape mode, and that's because Wonders are a little bit different than the rest of the cards that we've talked about so far. You are never going to stack wonders on top of each other. Instead, they will kind of um, go into a grouping area and every one of them will activate uh, at the end of the game, which is this little horseshoe symbol right there. I <laughs> forget the actual name for that one, sorry. Uh, and uh, the way the pyramids specifically work is they will give the player one culture, which again is one victory point for every one of the wonders that they have. So the pyramid in and of itself is worth one point right at the start, but anyone who gets this is going to be quite incentivized to get more wonders. Now the last card over here is Ramses II, who is a leader. Now leaders are also special because they are tilted to the side, and you can only ever have one leader at a time. So if you ever take another one, you will discard your previous leader. There's also a new symbol on this uh, card right here. It's a little gear symbol. Now this is another one of the main actions that you can do on your turn, is you can activate a gear symbol in your area, and for this one it says you can discard Ramses to grab any non-invested wonder that's out here on the, um, the board. So now that we know all of these specifics, the green player can make their decision, and there's obviously nothing to snipe, so they can either invest or they could do a harvest action. Now, I haven't talked about this one just yet, and it's pretty simple. When you do a harvest action, you're going to count up the number of the harvest symbols that you have. And again, that is the one that's down in the bottom corner right here. And then you will take that number of resources from the reserve and put them into the supply. And then whoever did the harvest action is going to take half of the resources in the supply rounded down. So that means right now the green player has no harvest symbols. So if they did a harvest action, they would simply take half rounded down of these resources, which in this case would be two. Uh, that's not a very good action for themselves, so they are uh, going to decide to do an investment. And they like the look of this uh, lighthouse over here. So they'll put this just like that, and then they've decided, they've got lots of resources now available to themselves, 
they're going to put three of them down here, uh, just like they did last time. This time they know that the blue player cannot snipe them, and we are unlikely to snipe them because we'd have to spend all of our resources. The green player decides they don't really want to take a chance at putting just two down. They're going to go with three. They would like to get some cards, and the lighthouse brings in a lot of different symbols, which are quite nice. All right, with that done, the green player can now clean up, but there are no cards to push in, so now we can go ahead and move to the blue player's turn. Well, when they consider they only have one resource available to themselves right now, and if they were to invest it in any of these cards, the odds are very high that one of their opponents would snipe that out from underneath them and get a card for a very cheap price, they have decided to instead do a harvest action. As I just mentioned before, that means they're going to count up all of their harvest icons, which in their case is currently zero, uh, so they would put zero resources from the reserve into the supply, and then they're going to grab half of the resources rounded down from the supply, so they are going to get to grab two of these resources right here, leaving three more in there. These are going to go back into their bank area, and now there's nothing to do for cleanup, so their turn is over, and now we get to go. Well, it looks to me like we have essentially two options. The first is we could do an investment and probably spend all three of our resources. And the second thing is we could spend all three of our resources and snipe out this lighthouse from the green player. Now, that would not necessarily be the best idea because while we would get this card right now, we would then have zero resources in front of ourselves. And the green player, well, we would be giving them three, so they go to five. These would go over here, and they would take half of those, so they get three more. So the green player would have eight resources, we would have zero, and the blue player would just have the three over there. And we would probably not be able to get much done for several turns after that. So I think maybe we'll play a little bit nicer, and I think let's go ahead and invest over here in the Republic. Now the reason for this is mostly because we can see down below it has a culture symbol. Now culture is worth one point at the end of the game. But the other thing involves these investor bonuses. Now they only exist for the culture, for the science, and for the trade. So that means the um, the harvest uh, symbols that I already have, as well as the uh, trade symbols, which I guess we'd probably be picking up a couple with the Republic as well, um, will never get you investor bonuses. And investor bonuses are a way to spring back in after spending a bunch of money. You can then get money back from the supply so that you can continue doing stuff. So I figure we'll go for this one so that we have the option of trying to take cards that give an investor bonus for having culture. And I figure let's, I guess, go ahead. We'll spend all three of ours. Um, it does mean that we're going to be uh, very poor after this. But I figure if we put just two down there, odds are pretty high that the green player would snipe that out. Uh, and uh, the blue player also could. Uh, I suppose that the blue player still could snipe this. But either way, if they do, at least we'll be getting a bunch of resources back. So with that, we are now done with our investment action. There's nothing to clean up, so the green player can now go. And they've decided they want to go ahead and claim the lighthouse. So this is going to come into their area. They get their investment token back. And then, of course, all of these resources go over here into the supply. So the lighthouse is going to get added into the green player's tableau, and the first thing that happens is we evaluate this investor bonus. So we can see it is going to evaluate on industry symbols. They have one, two available right here because the lighthouse has an ongoing science and industry happening. So that means they get an investor bonus of two, and there is no actual action to be evaluated down here. So they can go ahead and finish off their turn by simply taking that investor bonus. It comes from the supply and then goes right back into their bank. So they're feeling pretty happy about that. And then, of course, we have to do cleanup. So we're going to bring out a new card. This one is a wonder. So this is the Great Wall. It is also going to be an endgame scoring wonder. And it says that for every two shields that you have, you will gain one culture. Also, this uh, Great Wall is going to provide two shields. So it makes the person who has this uh, much more defended against attacks. It's now the blue player's turn, and they have decided they want to do an investment. They're going to put it in over here onto the Great Wall. They have decided, well, we currently have zero resources, so they're not too concerned about us uh, doing any sniping. Uh, and they have decided, well, if they put all three of their resources in over here, then the green player could still snipe them. And in that case, they would get three resources back, as well as three from the supply once those got added in. So I guess they would rebound up to six resources. If they instead put two in here, uh, then they would get two from the green player if green decided to snipe on that. And then they would take half of this over here, and I guess that would just be two. So that would leave them with just four. So they decide it's probably better to play it safe. They're going to put all three of their resources down just like that. And now they're done with their investment, and there's nothing to clean up, so we can now take our turn. 
Well, the way I see it, we could either take a harvest action to go ahead and grab a couple tokens out of here and then take half of the supply. And in that case, we would pull two out because we have two harvest icons and there would be six and we grab three of those. So we'd end up with three resources, but I think that may be a little bit more risky than we want to uh, keep things because right now we are poised to be able to take this card over here. And it was a bit expensive, but it's a very nice card. So let's maybe not push our luck too much for our action on this turn. I think let's go ahead and take this card. We, of course, have to pay for that, and all these uh, resources are going to go into the supply, which is starting to get pretty big over there. And then we can add the Republic over into our tableau. Now we can see that as a government, we were an agrarian tribe, but now we are a Republic. So we will cover up everything but just the bottom symbol right there. And next up, we can evaluate the investor bonus. It is going to give us one for every one of the culture icons we have. And fortunately, the Republic has a single culture icon on it. It also has a couple trade icons, which will be a little bit nice for uh, maybe uh, being penalized less for being sniped in the future. But either way, we can go ahead and take our investor bonus of one. And then we can go ahead and finish our turn off by doing some cleanup. So we'll draw the top card here, and it looks like this one is another leader. This is Confucius, and this one says that you can use this card in order to take another leader. So essentially, Confucius can turn into a leader in the future. It's going to be a leader from the central area. And of course, this card also has an investor bonus on culture, which means it might pay for itself or at least discount itself pretty well. So Confucius is going to go right over there. And now the green player can take their turn. After considering all of their options, the green player decides they want to invest in the pyramids, and they're going to do it with two out of their four resources. Now, this is a relatively low bid, but they can tell that the blue player has no resources, and we just have one, so this is snipe-proof at the moment. So that is going to finish out their turn, and now the blue player gets to go, and considering they have zero resources, and the uh, supply over here currently has six, they have decided they actually want to hold off on pulling this back. They can now see that neither of their opponents can actually snipe out, uh, snipe this out. And if they were to take this card right now, then all three of these would filter over here, and I think we would have a massive harvest action. They definitely don't want to incentivize that from happening, so they are going to do a harvest action. So they're going to count up their harvest icons, and currently it is still zero for them. So they pull zero tokens out of the reserve into the supply, and then the blue player is going to take half of these. These will go over into their area, and now their turn is over, and now we get to go. Well, with just a single resource available to ourselves, I feel like it would be a bad idea to go ahead and invest that in any of these cards because it would be such a low cost for one of our opponents to grab that card, and any card is probably going to be worth the one resource at the moment. I figure instead we should go ahead and do a harvest action. Uh, we know that we have two harvest icons in our area, as you can see right down here which means we'll pull two out of the reserve and put them over here into the supply. And now we get to grab half of the supply. And unfortunately, this means we just get to grab two of them. So that was not a very powerful turn, but I feel like we were kind of backed into a corner there. So we'll go ahead and add those in there. And now our turn is over and the green player can go. And they've decided they're going to go ahead and claim the pyramids. So this is going to go into their area. They will spend their supply, right, uh, their resources into the supply. So uh, we're definitely a bit behind the ball doing that harvest action last turn. And then the pyramids will join in the green player's tableau, and there is an investor bonus for hammers. So we can see that they currently have one, two of these industrial hammers right there. So that means the investor bonus is going to be two, and this card, if they still have it at the end of the game, will be worth one point, or one culture that is, per wonder that they have. So the investor bonus is going to come out of the supply. That brings them two more. So we're a little envious for the position of the green player in particular. Those investor bonuses are really keeping them going. Uh, with that done, they can now do their cleanup. So we're going to draw the top card, and it looks like this one is a temple. This is a construction card, and it has an ongoing ability of just showing two cultures. So that is quite a bit of culture icons showing up, especially if you're able to uh, get one of the investor um, bonuses for culture while you have this going. All right, it is now the blue player's turn, and they have three of their resources in front of themselves, but there's nothing for them to snipe, uh, and they can't invest in anything because they've already invested in this over here. So they're going to go ahead and use their turn to grab the Great Wall of, uh, uh, just the Great Wall, I suppose, and then they will spend this resources over here for that. And when this comes into their area, we can see this gives them an investor bonus for industry, but they currently don't have any industry icons. So there's no investment bonus for them. And if they still have this at the end of the game, they will get one culture for every two shields they have. Also, it gives them two shields ongoing. So they are very defensive right now with three total. All right, let's go ahead and finish off the blue player's turn by cleaning up and drawing this card. It looks like it is philosophy, which is a green knowledge card. 
Now this has an activatable ability on it. It says that you can spend three resources in order to grab a knowledge card from the top of the row, which of course would cover up philosophy, but uh, one time use on that is pretty good and it does come with a science down there. All right, it's once again our turn and we do have three resources available to ourselves. And I am getting a little bit concerned about our defense value. Uh, currently, we have zero attack symbols and zero defense symbols, so our defense is zero. And we can see that the uh, blue player, uh, I'm sorry, the green player also has a defense value of zero. But the blue player has an attack value of one and a defense of four already. So they've really been going hard on that. Now what that means is if the blue player was to take these warriors right here, then they could attack one of their opponents and steal some resources from them. Now I suppose if we made uh, sure that we did not have resources in that moment, then maybe the blue player, if they were to take this, would attack uh, the green player instead. I think maybe what we should do is try to uh, make use of the investor bonuses. And in particular, we know that we took the one culture icon so that we could try and get some investor bonuses on culture. I think maybe we should risk things a little bit and spend two of our resources and we'll put them over here on Confucius along with our investor token, of course. The reason we're doing this instead of the three is because with the two right here, if somebody was to snipe us, then we would gain two back, I suppose. And then these two would come down here and we have two trades. We'd be able to take two immediately and then take half of what is left, which would be an even amount. And when things round down, that's generally not in your favor. I suppose I could pay this third one, which means I get paid a third one um, back, and so it might kind of even out, but also just not spending this means potentially we'll have that for the future, and I don't think our opponents are particularly interested in this card. None of them have any culture, so the investment bonus is not uh, very good for them, so let's go ahead and chance that, and now we don't have any cleanup to do at the end of our turn, so now it's the green player's turn. After considering it for a minute, they've decided they want to invest over here in the Warriors. Now, this is probably a defensive thing because, again, they're going to do an attack with an attack value of zero if they keep this card, but they probably don't want the attack to come back at them. Also, this card does come with a permanent shield, so this would increase their defense going forward in the game. Now, when it comes to the amount they want to spend, they've decided to do three. They are betting that the blue player is not going to want to snipe this out. That would be quite costly for them. Also, there that would be a really big pile of resources over here in the supply if the snipe was to happen, and the green player would get a whole bunch back. So uh, that is going to be their main action. There's nothing to clean up, so now the blue player gets to go. And they have decided that instead of sniping, they're going to invest over here, and they're going to do it for just two of their resources. Uh, this temple is a really good uh, source of culture to potentially rebound into some of the investor bonuses, and they like the look of it. So with that done, their turn is now over, and now we get to go. And I think we're pretty happy with how that uh, laid out. Let's go ahead and grab this card right here. So this will come into our area. We'll spend these two resources into the supply, and now we, of course, get our token back. And now we can see that when Confucius joins into our tableau, it's going to give us an investor bonus on culture. Uh, we have one culture for Confucius and then one culture for the Republic. So that's going to be an investment bonus of two resources back. And the ability on here, once again, is something that we can spend our entire turn doing. And it would allow us to grab a new leader from the board as long as it is currently non-invested when we do that. So this is going to allow us to grab a really nice leader without essentially having to pay for it. Well, we of course can't forget to give ourselves the investor bonus of two, and then we can finish our turn off by cleaning up. We're going to draw the top card, and it looks like this one is Ironworks. This is a knowledge card, and it immediately activates when someone grabs it, and it allows them to take a non-invested uh, red military card from the row. It's now the green player's turn, and they've decided they're going to go ahead and just take this card that they bid on last round. So that is the Warriors right here, and we see that's going to put three more resources into the supply. And then this is going to get added into their tableau, and they immediately attack one of their opponents. Now, again, the attack value is going to be the number of the attack symbols, which is that uh, axe and spear symbol, which they currently have none of. So they have an attack value of zero, so this is an unsuccessful attack. But again, a big reason they took this was to get this shield to help block themselves in the future with a nice defense. Now, of course, when the Warriors comes into their area, they get an investor bonus. This one is on science, and they currently have one science in their area. So that means they get an investor bonus of one. So this one will come from the supply, and now we can draw the next card from the top of the deck. It looks like this one is going to be another wonder. This is the Hanging Gardens. So this is also an end game effect, and it'll give one culture for every construction card that the person who has this um, has at the end of the game. It also has an investor bonus on industry, as well as an industry icon on it. 
At this point, it's now the blue player's turn, and they could just collect this temple right here, but with so many resources over here in the supply, they've decided to do a harvest action. Now, they continue to have zero harvest icons in their area, so they're going to pull zero of these tokens into the supply, and then they're going to grab half of these, round it down. That's going to be four resources, which is a significant amount. This is going to go right over here into their area, and that's going to finish out their turn. They just didn't like the idea of collecting this card and putting two more into this because they figured it was very likely that we would do a supply action and get a ton of resources for it. So this has been uh, lowered down to a more reasonable amount. Their turn is now over, and now we get to go. And it looks like we have a couple options. One thing we could do is use our Confucius in order to immediately get rid of him and grab Ramses II. Now, this has an investor bonus on culture, so we would have a single culture icon left over, so that would allow us to grab one supply from the uh, one resource from the supply. Now, that does seem like a reasonable move, and it means on the next turn, we could potentially use Ramses II to grab the Hanging Gardens over here, as long as nobody else has invested in this one. But the Hanging Gardens is not particularly great for us just yet. We have no construction cards, and I think maybe we want to hold off on this. Another idea that I have, and I think I want to go ahead and uh, use this, is invest over here in the Ironworks. Now, on the first look, this is not a very good pick, because when you grab this card, it's going to immediately allow you to grab a non-invested red card from the middle, and there currently are no red cards. But the thing is that we haven't seen a single red card from Age 1 just yet, and we've seen a bunch of Age 1 cards. So I think it's somewhat likely we're going to see one soon. And this also means that our opponents are less likely, I think, to snipe this away from us until there is a good red card out here. So let's go ahead and do that, and I think maybe we should go ahead and use two of our resources. Uh, this does mean that both the green and the blue player could snipe this out from underneath us, and I guess, you know what, maybe we should go ahead and do all three. Uh, this would be a really nice thing, and we really want to make our opponents pay for it if they do take this out from underneath us, and I suppose next turn we do have a stalling tactic in that we could potentially use Confucius, again, as long as nobody has grabbed Ramses over here. So that is going to finish out our turn. There's nothing to do for cleanup, and now the green player gets to go. Well, unfortunately for us, they have decided they want to invest over here in Ramses II, so our Confucius plan is maybe not going to work out so well for us. Now, when they do this, they're going to go ahead and put a price of two on here, spending all of their resources, and that's going to finish out their turn, and now the blue player gets to go. After considering it for a minute, they decide they do like the idea of sniping Ramses away from the green player. So they're going to go ahead and pay two money uh, right over to the green player immediately, and then both of these are going to come over here into the supply, the blue player is going to get to grab the Ramses card itself, and then the green player gets to activate their trade icons. Currently down in their tableau, they have no trade icons, so they don't get to grab any of these right away, and then they get to take half of these rounded down, so that means they're going to get to grab three of these. So these will all go back into their supply. And now the blue player will bring Ramses over here into their tableau, and it looks like the investor bonus is going to activate on culture, but they currently have no culture icons, so they get no investor bonus, and this is an effect that they can use in the future to try and grab a wonder, so with that, they are done with this activation. And that means they can finish out their turn by doing the cleanup, and it looks like we got lucky. Awesome. There were red cards in here indeed, and this is archers. So this gives a defense, uh, an ongoing defense of two, it has an investor bonus on light bulbs, and it uh, adds one attack value. So this is going to get added in right there, and now it's our turn, and I think this is uh, pretty obvious. I think our gamble uh, played uh, paid out pretty well. There's not that many of these age one cards left over, so that uh, was likely to work out for us, but either way, uh, let's go ahead and pull this card back. So this is going to go into our area, and then we can immediately, of course, pay for it. So all three of these will go into the supply. And then we will go ahead and stack the ironworks on top of our previous knowledge card, just like that. Uh, now we'll get the investor bonus of light bulbs. And unfortunately, we don't have any light bulbs. So that's not going to be getting us any uh, investments just now. But now we can go ahead and activate this immediate effect and draw a non invested military card. This will, of course, be the archers. And so we can grab this and put it into our tableau which means it'll go right down over here. And it is important to note that while this has an investor bonus of uh, science, we did not invest in this card. We picked it up through an action. So uh, while we would activate this right down here, if that was an instant or an attack, we do not get an investor bonus because there was no investment involved with this particular card grab. So with that, we are now done with our action. That was a really good turn for us. But of course, we are now left with zero resources. So let's now go ahead and finish uh, doing the cleanup. And we have two different spots to fill in. This first one is going to be uh, Theocracy. This is going to be a government building, and it has an ongoing effect. It looks like all of your wonders will actually add one to your um, 
uh, attack value. That is pretty scary in certain people's hands. Uh, we currently don't have any wonders, but uh, we do know that both of our opponents do. And then the other card to come out is going to be, uh, looks like Aristotle. So this one immediately allows you to grab a non-invested knowledge card from the uh, central area. It has two science on it as well, and I think this could potentially be a really good one for us to try and grab with um, Confucius if Aristotle is still out. So we'll see how that one plays out. Uh, with that, our turn is now over, and the green player gets to go. And after thinking about it for a minute, they've decided to go over here. Unfortunately for us, uh, this is just too good of a combo for them to be uh, eyeballing. And they can tell that, well, we're not going to be able to invest over here. And the blue player is already locked into an investment over there. So the only issue with this plan is if they get sniped. Now, they really want to keep on to this because, as you can see, Aristotle has two science right on there. And um, this uh, philosophy also has a science printed on there. So this would be a nice start towards getting a bunch of science symbols, which will allow them to be able to keep cycling their money through investor bonuses later. Uh, they already are doing pretty good on industry, so branching out into another uh, investment bonus one is a good idea for them. And because of this, they've decided they're going to overcommit a bit. They think they could probably do it with three, but they're worried the blue player might go ahead and snipe it out if they did put three down. They've got quite a bit of resources right now, so they figure they may as well use them. So they'll put all four of them over there, and that's going to finish out their turn. And this means that it's now the blue player's turn. And they don't uh, really have that much in the way of options. They could do a harvest action, I suppose, that would allow them to grab three of these. They, of course, could take this temple that has been sitting here for a while. And they also have this uh, Ramses II, which would allow them to grab a non-invested... Uh, wonder. Actually, I take it back. They do have um, decent options here. Uh, grabbing this card is good, and I just realized that the uh, Hanging Gardens is currently open, and they do already have one construction card, and there's still this temple that nobody has sniped out from under them in quite some time. They figure, yeah, they're going to go ahead and do it. They will use the Ramses card, which is going to discard the card from the game permanently, and then that's going to allow them to pick up the Hanging Gardens. This card's now going to get added into their area, and considering they did not invest in this card, they grabbed it through an action, they're not going to get the benefit of this investment bonus, so that means they are now done with this action. We can now go ahead and finish out their turn by doing some cleanup. We can see the last card drawn is going to be Swordsman. This is obviously a military card, and it has an attack on it, which would actually destroy the top government card on whoever was successfully attacked with this card. So we'll go ahead and add that in right there, and it's worth noting that we now see there is a H2 card here at the top of the deck. Now we're not into H2 just yet. We have to have one of these cards come out here onto the row, or have one of the players have an H2 card within their tableau. And it's also worth noting, you'll see this little symbol in the top right with an A and a slash. As soon as you change ages, you are going to discard all cards from the central area that are two ages behind. So essentially, if there were any Antiquities cards still out, when this card comes into play, then those would get discarded. But it looks like all of those have been taken. So with that, the cleanup phase is now done. So we can now go ahead and take our turn. Now, we have no uh, resources in front of ourselves, and unfortunately, our Confucius uh, action does not have any valid targets because it has to be a non-invested uh, uh, leader, and the green player went over here. They saw this combo. They knew that they had to stop this from happening. Uh, using this into that, into this, was way too strong for us, so uh, this is also going to be good for them, but it was a bit of a hate play. Uh, so now we can go ahead and figure out what we're going to do on our turn, and we don't have much in the way of options. We can't snipe anybody out. We have no resources. So I figure we'll go ahead and do a harvest action. Now we still have two harvest icons in our tableau. So that means we're going to get take two um, of these resources from the uh, reserve. We'll put them into the supply. And now we can take half of the supply rounded down. That'll be four resources, which is pretty nice for ourselves. We can then add these over here. Our turn is now over, but at least we'll have some nice options later. And hopefully we'll see a really nice uh, age two leader come out soon so that we could use that Confucius. All right, with our turn done, the green player can now go, and it looks like their turn is pretty simple. They're going to go ahead and buy this card right here. So this is going to come into their area. They can go ahead and pay for this, so that's going to be four more resources over here into the supply. And then as soon as Aristotle enters this area, they're going to get the investor bonus on culture. So at the moment, they don't actually have any culture, but that's not the reason they took this card. They really took it for this immediate instant effect. As soon as this lands, they get to draw a non-invested knowledge card from the central area. And their only option is to take philosophy.
This will now go into their Tableau, and since they did not invest in it, they will not get this really nice Science Investor bonus, but they now have this as a future potential action option. Once they have three uh, resources available to themselves, they could potentially spend those just to grab a, a non-invested knowledge card from the central area. So with that, they're now done with their action, and we can clean up at the end of their turn. So as soon as we draw this card, we are now going to go into the second age, and it is worth noting that you're only going to be discarding the Antiquities card from the central area. Any cards that we have in our tableaus are safe. All right, so the first card we got is a Crossbowman. Uh, this one is going to provide two defense ongoing, and now we can see in the second age we have multiple symbols showing up down the bottom. This gives a defense as well as an attack value right there. The next card to come out is going to be Irrigation. So this is going to be a Knowledge, and it's quite similar to the one that we took um, in the beginning of the game. It allows you to take resources for yourself from the reserve equal to the number of Harvest Tokens that you have. And this Irrigation has two Harvest Tokens on it, so it definitely works well with itself to give somebody a nice big boost of resources. With that, the green player's turn is completely over, and the blue player can now go. And as far as options are concerned, they could do a harvest action and grab uh, half of these supplies, but they figure they've waited long enough. They're going to now go ahead and grab this temple. It's been out here for a whole bunch of turns, actually. Uh, so this is going to come down into their area. They will, of course, spend their two resources. That apparently was a good amount of money. I feel like maybe one of us should have sniped that out from them, but I guess the option never really presented it to, uh, to ourselves, so this will go away. And now this temple is going to go ahead and overlap on the barracks, so the uh, blue player now has lost access to that one shield, but they still have a bunch of shields going around. So this will get added right there, and an investor bonus happens based off of industry. So when we look around, we can see that they currently have one industry token, so they will get a single uh, industry investor bonus, and they have an ongoing two culture as long as this temple is on the top. That investor bonus, of course, comes from the supply, and now we can do the cleanup for the blue player's turn. We'll draw another H2 card, and this one is a castle. So we can see this is a construction card, and it says that every one of your military cards gives you another military symbol. So it really lets you double down on that. We now have a new symbol as well. You see this infinity symbol, which we've seen. It's an ongoing one. But this little circle with a cross through it means that uh, any cards with that symbol are not going to be active once the game is over. So that means that uh, there are ways to get points for different symbols. This uh, uh, bonus right here will not turn into end game points for whoever has this. This also provides two shields, which makes a lot of thematic sense for a castle, I think. At this point, it's now our turn, and I think we really like the look of this castle. Now, of course, the uh, two shields adding two defense is nice. Also, this has an investor bonus on industry, and we do have a single industry uh, symbol in our area. Also, we don't have any of these construction cards just yet, and we know that the blue player is going to be quite interested in grabbing this one because they do have a wonder that is going to give them points for these construction uh, buildings. I think when you add all that stuff up together, let's go ahead and put an investment token over here on it. And I think we want to make this painful for the blue player if they want to snipe this out from us. If we did just two of our resources, I don't think that would be painful enough. We would, of course, be getting a bunch of resources over here from the supply. But let's go ahead and throw one more over here. And I think that's going to finish out our turn. So with that done, the green player now gets to go, and with a single resource, they have decided they don't want to try and invest in something that will get instantly sniped. Uh, they're going to go ahead and do a harvest action. They have zero harvest icons in front of themselves right now, so that means we'll pull zero of these tokens out. They'll now get half of the uh, resources and the supply, so that's going to be four, and that is going to finish out their turn, and now the blue player gets to take their turn. After considering their options, they decide they don't want to snipe this out from us. Instead, they like the look of this theocracy, and this is actually really good for them. Maybe we overvalued the castle right here, but uh, either way, they're going to go ahead and invest over here. And they have decided, well, let's see, if they did just two, it does seem somewhat likely that the green player would swing in, especially considering the green player has the pyramids, which gives them culture for having wonders, and this theocracy does uh, make it better for people with wonders. The blue player already has two wonders, so this card right here will add two attack power right off the bat, so they figure they're going to go ahead and not do two. They're probably going to stick with three. Actually, they get a pretty nice investor bonus back from this. They're just going to go nuts. They'll put all four down. This is a really good card for themselves, and that is going to finish out their turn, so now we get to go. Uh, we could do a harvest action, but we would just, I guess we pull two out and then grab three of these. That doesn't seem super strong. I think let's go ahead and just grab this castle. So this will go down, and these three uh, resources will get added into the supply. 
and we can see this is the first of our construction buildings. So the first thing to look at is we have an investor bonus based off of industry. We currently have just one industry token, so we'll get an investor bonus of one resource back. And then as an ongoing ability, every one of our military cards has an extra attack power. So that means that uh, we currently have one two attack power total. So that's, I guess, better than one. Either way, we've got a ton of shields showing now, so we don't have to worry too much about being attacked in the short run anyway. We, of course, can't forget to take our investment bonus of one, so that leaves us with just two, which is not great, but either way, that's the bed we made. So let's now go ahead and clean up at the end of our turn. We'll draw this card. And, ooh, it is a leader. Unfortunately, it's coming out at the end of our turn, but uh, let's see, this is gonna be Justinian the first. So down here it says that as soon as you take this uh, leader, you can grab a knowledge card, a construction card, or a government card from the middle that is uh, obviously not invested. This is pretty good for us considering it activates on culture. It has a couple culture on there as well. I think we are going to be interested in grabbing this one on our next turn if it's still available. This means it's now the green player's turn, and they have decided they want to invest over here in Crossbowmen. Uh, they currently have a defense of one, and they can see the defense is uh, getting uh, quite a lot bigger for both of their opponents, and they'd like to try and catch up. They're not really sure what nasty stuff could be coming out here, but I do know that there are some rather large uh, military uh, cards that do come out, and we, of course, have a modifier on the red military cards as well. So either way, the green player is going to go over here, and considering this card has an investment bonus based off of science, and the green player currently has three science, they feel like it's a no-brainer. They're going to spend three of their resources over here, and that's going to be just enough to stop them uh, from being potentially sniped by us on our next turn, and they'll get all of it back as soon as they go ahead and pull this into their area. So with that, their turn is now done, and the blue player can go. They can do a harvest action if they'd like, but uh, they really would like to pull this token back in. So they're going to go ahead and uh, reclaim this theocracy that they bid on last turn. Next up, all four of these resources are going to get added into this now huge supply. Next up, the Theocracy is going to go ahead and cover up these seafaring traders. They're also going to get an investment bonus based off of culture, and they do have one culture, oh no, three culture right now showing. So that's going to be three of the resources back. So I guess them spending four seems a little less crazy now. Uh, also, this ability is going to allow all of their wonders to give them a plus one uh, military, uh, sorry, attack strength. So they have two of these, so that's one, two, three attack value for themselves right now. And they'll now go ahead and grab their three resources as their investor bonus. After that, they can go ahead and finish out their turn by doing some cleanup. They have to draw one card from the top of the stack, and it looks like this one is going to be Astronomy. So this one is kind of funny. Uh, when you uh, claim this one and put it down into your area, you claim the top card from the draw pile. So you don't actually know what you're going to find when you go uh, in for astronomy. It could end up covering up something that you really like, but it's certainly going to grab you a card. So we'll go ahead and put that right there. With that completed, it's now our turn, and I think that this could be kind of fun. Let's go ahead and, uh, for our main action, use Confucius. So this is going to force us to, uh, well, first of all, we can activate this to grab a non-invested leader. We'll go ahead and take Justinian the first, and as soon as you take another leader, it's going to force you to discard your previous leader. So goodbye, Confucius, and now hello, Justinian. He is now going to get added into our tableau, and unfortunately we will not get the investor bonus because we obviously did not invest in this card, but we do get to activate this down here, which means we can grab any single knowledge, construction, or government card that's not currently invested. This means our options are essentially astronomy or irrigation, and I think astronomy sounds like a lot more fun. So let's go ahead and grab this one. Obviously, we're not going to get the investor bonus, and this is going to come into our tableau, and we will immediately activate this right here. So we've uh, had quite a combo chain going here, and that's going to allow us to draw the top card of the deck, and it looks like this is going to be knights. All right, so this one, you know, of course, we're not doing an investor bonus, but we will be performing an attack with this one. So we can go ahead and add this into our tableau along with our astronomy, of course. We'll stack that right there, and then the knights will cover up these two shields. So we did become a little bit more vulnerable, but now we can activate the knights. So this is going to be an attack on one opponent, and if it is successful, then we will go ahead and destroy their top knowledge card or their top construction card. So the first thing we need to do for this attack is we need to add up our attack strength. So uh, right down here, we have one, two, and then this castle is going to cause each of our military cards to have another military strength. So that's three, four total. So we have four attack. Next up, both of our opponents need to calculate their defense value. Now, the green player over here currently has 
one shield, and it looks like no attack value. They are currently invested in the crossbowmen, but they have not actually been able to pull these into their area yet. So their defense value is just one, and the blue player over here has two shields over here, so that's two defense. This attack value gives them another defense, but this theocracy right here also makes it so that every one of their wonders adds one attack value. Attack value also goes into defense, so that's two more, so that means all told they are at five defense value, and we're coming in with four attack, so that means our only option is to attack the green player over here, and if you remember, the knights say that we are going to destroy a knowledge or a construction card, and I figure this lighthouse looks a little bit more powerful than philosophy over here. So let's go ahead and destroy the lighthouse. And now the attack is fully evaluated. Well, that was quite a turn. We did a whole bunch of stuff, but now we have to go ahead and do some cleanup. We're going to draw two cards, and it looks like the first one is going to be another wonder. This is the Great Mosque, and it's going to give one culture for every government card that whoever has this has. And then the other card is going to be... Feudalism. So this one is a new government, and that one is going to give uh, one shield for every harvest icon that people have. Now, we're currently the only ones with harvest icons, but if anyone gets this irrigation, it comes with two right on there. So that could be a pretty good combo for someone. Okay, it's now the green player's turn, and they are going to go ahead and grab this crossbowman, and they're feeling like this is just one turn too late for them. They, of course, have to pay for it by putting these resources over into the supply. And then the crossbowmen are going to get joined into their tableau, covering up the warriors, and it looks like their investment bonus is going to be based off science. So we can look down here and see that they have one, two, three science showing, so they will get three uh, resources back as their investor bonus, and the ongoing effect for crossbowmen is two more shields that they desperately needed one turn before now. So these three resources are going to come out of the supply and back into the green player's area, and now they can clean up by drawing another card. Looks like we have yet another government. This says bureaucracy, and you can use your turn to take another government card. That feels pretty bureaucratic to me, so that goes right there, and now the blue player gets to take their turn. At the moment, there's nothing to snipe, and so the blue player decides that instead of doing a harvest action, they like the look of this great mosque right here. So they'll put their investor token down right there, and they've decided they're going to go ahead and spend all three of their resources over here onto that card. That's going to finish out their turn. There's nothing to clean up. So now we get to take our turn, and we currently have two resources. Well, it looks like we could potentially do an investment on one of these cards, although the green player does have quite a few resources available. They could potentially snipe something out from us. I suppose that wouldn't be the end of the world, considering there's a rather large supply here, and we do also have a couple trade icons. So let's go ahead and invest over here in Feudalism. We already have a couple harvest icons, so we can just be super duper defensive. Of course, these shields are going to come and go based off of the card, so I think it's good to maybe invest in more of these. And then let's just go ahead and spend both of our resources over here. So we'll put those down, and now our turn is over, and the green player can decide what they're going to do. After considering some options, they decide that they do actually want to go ahead and snipe feudalism. So they're going to give us two resources over here, and then they get to take this card, both of these are going to go down into the supply, and now we can go ahead and count up all of our trade icons. It looks like we have one, two, three total, so we're going to get to grab three of the resources back from the supply uh, because we were sniped. And then we're going to go ahead and take half of the resources in the supply and round it down. So it looks like that's going to be three more resources, so we certainly have a lot of resources going our way right now. Next up, we have the green player who gets to put feudalism down into their area. They're going to cover up the craftsman tribe, and at this point, I want to make a clarification. Uh, they do not get an investor bonus because this was a snipe action. They obviously did not invest in this, and I think it's possible I've made that mistake previously in the video. So I'm going to try to correct those where they are and play that one correctly going forward. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, now they, of course, have the ability down here. This is going to give them one shield per uh, harvest icon that they have, which is currently zero, but uh, they are probably going to be much more interested in that irrigation card now. They can now go ahead and end out their turn by doing some cleanup, and it looks like we've got another wonder. This is Angkor Wat, and it is going to give one culture for every one of the harvest symbols that you have at the end of the game. It also has a couple culture on there as well. This means that the blue player is now up, and they have decided, instead of doing a very weak harvest action, they're going to go ahead and pick up this uh, great mosque that they uh, invested in on a previous turn. That means all three of these resources are going to come down into the supply. And we can see this is actually the third wonder that they've picked up this game so far. So uh, the investor bonus on this one is going to be based off of industry. And when they look around, they've got one, 
two total. So they're going to get two resources back as the bonus. This will bring them back up to two total. And now they can do some cleanup. They're going to go ahead and draw the top card. And it looks like this one is going to be a monastery. This is a construction building, and it just has an ongoing culture available. Okay, it's now our turn, and it looks like we forgot to pull our investor token back when we got sniped. And I think considering we have eight resources to the three and two of our opponents, this is actually a pretty good place for our investor token to be because we already have two harvest icons, and Angkor Wat will give one culture for each of those. I think we may as well maybe spend three of our resources. It does mean that the green player could potentially snipe us, but I think they are somewhat unlikely to. I guess they did just take feudalism, which does give them a bonus for having harvest icons, but that means if they sniped us, they would have no resources to maybe go over here and try and take irrigation. So I think this is pretty safe. We'll go ahead and put these all right there. That's going to end up our turn, and now the green player goes, and they decide they want to invest over here in the monastery. They've decided they're going to spend all three of their resources to do that, to get themselves out of snipe range for the blue player, and certainly make us pay quite a lot for it if we do want to snipe them. So that's going to be their whole turn, and now the blue player gets to go. After thinking through their options, the blue player doesn't really like any of them. Uh, this bureaucracy over here, if they were to invest and take it, would cover up their theocracy, which is currently giving them three military at uh, attack value. Uh, this irrigation over here, if they uh, put an investment on it, they would just be uh, begging us to, I think, snipe that out from them, considering we already have this Anchor Watt thing invested, and so we really would like to get some more of those harvest tokens. And then lastly, over here with the swordsmen, if they were to invest over here, it's a similar situation, because we we would be likely to snipe that out because if we added this into our tableau, we would then have enough to do a military attack. I suppose the blue player themselves would be safe from that, but uh, and the green player would get hit. So I suppose that might be slightly better, but that also makes us much stronger going forward. So I think in the end, they've decided not to do any investments. They're just going to do a harvest uh, move that's going to pull zero tokens out because they have zero harvest icons, and they're then going to take half rounded down from the supply. It's a pretty weak turn for the blue player, but they weren't really able to convince themselves of a better one right there. This means that it's now our turn, and we could potentially snipe out this monastery. The problem with that is that would cover up our castle, and our castle is currently giving us a couple military strength, which is a nice thing to have around. I'm not super eager to cover this up just yet, so maybe instead let's just go ahead and grab Angkor Wat. So this is going to get taken off the board. We'll obviously put all three of these resources over here into the supply. And it looks like this is our first wonder of the game. So we can now add that in right there, and the investor bonus is based off of industry. When we look around, we've got one industry right there, and that's our only industry. <laughs> so we'll get an investor bonus of just one, which does bring us back up to six, and now we can finish out our turn by doing some cleanup. We'll draw the top card, and it looks like this is the last of the age two cards, and this one is going to be Genghis Khan. So the ability down here is that whenever you go ahead and do a attack one person or attack uh, lots of people, you're going to have the ability to take two um, resources from the supply down here. At this point, it's now the green player's turn, and they have decided they're going to go ahead and collect this monastery. All three resources are, of course, going to go into the supply. And once this gets added into their tableau, we can see it has an investor bonus based off of industry. Now, they have one, two industry total, so that'll be two uh, that they get for an investor bonus, and ongoing, this is going to get them one culture as well as a couple culture down here. Next up, they're going to get that investor bonus from the supply, and they can finish out their turn by cleaning up, and the moment this card comes down, we have now entered age three. So that means that, as you can see, any age one cards on the tableau are going to get discarded. This swordsman never actually got grabbed by anyone, so we'll go ahead and discard this. Now we can see what this card is, and this is a frigate. So this has an ongoing ability that every one of your trade icons adds defense. So we're seeing lots of defensive cards, but the frigate itself also adds two attack value. And now we can see the next card to fill in this hole is going to be Constitutional Monarchy. So this gives you three industry right off the bat as long as this is face up. And that could be really good when it comes to some of these investor bonuses. Okay, it's now the blue player's turn, and they have decided they really like the look of Genghis Khan over here. They like the look of him so much, they're going to spend all four of their resources bidding on him. So those will all go right down there, and that's going to finish out their turn. 
So now we can go, and we do have six resources available, so we could snipe this out, although that would be a very expensive thing. I guess Genghis Khan does also come with two attack value printed on him. But instead, I think maybe we should invest in this constitutional monarchy. Uh, it is true that this irrigation does look pretty attractive to us. It has two of the harvest icons, and we do have Ankar Wat, so this would be essentially worth two extra points for us if we were to grab it. Uh, and this frigate also is uh, pretty powerful when it comes to adding more attack value. But right now, our uh, government has just these two trade symbols. And I guess that would work well with this uh, frigate, but it hasn't done a whole lot for us. And this constitutional monarchy providing three industry symbols would be really good for us to keep going with some of these industry um, uh, investor bonuses, that is. So let's go ahead and go here, and I think I want to make sure that we can grab this one. I don't want the green player to be able to snipe this out, so let's go ahead and spend three of our resources. And now it is the green player's turn. They've decided they don't really want to do any investing just now. They're instead going to do a harvest action. They still only have uh, zero harvest icons. We're the only person who has harvest icons so far. So we are going to pull zero out from the uh, reserve. And they're going to get to take half of the resources here in the supply. So that's going to bring them up to five total resources. And now it is the blue player's turn. At this point, it looks like a harvest action would be pretty terrible. So instead, they're just going to go ahead and pick up Genghis Khan here. Once he joins in with the blue player's tableau, we can see there is an investor bonus based off of culture, and it looks like the blue player has one, two, three total culture. So they're going to get three resources back as an investor bonus, which will bring them up to three. And after that, we can go ahead and do the cleanup. We're going to draw one card to fill in the slot, and it looks like this is going to be Napoleon Bonaparte. So this is an attack all. You can see all of these different axes. That means whoever takes this one will do an attack on everybody. They don't have to pick and choose. And it looks like it will destroy the top government of whoever that was. Also, Napoleon provides three attack symbols. So that's a pretty potent leader right there. With that completed, we can once again take our turn, and it looks like our options are not huge. Uh, we are the only ones currently investing in anything, so we can't snipe anything, and I figure this is a pretty poor harvest action, so let's just go ahead and grab this constitutional monarchy. All three of these resources will, of course, go into the supply. And then it looks like this is going to cover up our republic. So once we put that there, we get an investor bonus based off of culture, and we actually have quite a bit of culture. We've got one, two, three, four five, six total. So we spent uh, three resources on that and we're going to get six resources back. This is obviously pretty darn huge because we already had three. That's going to bring us up to nine. We essentially liquidated the entire supply. So that's the first time we've had a really good investor bonus action like that. Uh, we can now, of course, finish out our turn by drawing another card. This one is going to be another one of the leaders. This is going to be Christopher Columbus, and it looks like he has the ability where you can activate him for your turn to discard your current leader and then draw whatever card is on the top of the deck. That uh, is just like astronomy, I suppose. At this point, it's now the green player's turn, and they have decided to finally activate this philosophy. They've been holding on to this for a very long time, and if you remember, the activatable ability says they can spend three of their resources to immediately grab one of the knowledge cards that's face up up here and is currently not being invested. So that means they can spend three resources, of which they have five, and now they can go ahead and grab this irrigation right here. This is now going to cover up the philosophy, and they unfortunately do not get this um, uh, investor bonus. They have a whole bunch of uh, the science icons, but this was uh, taken through a regular action. Uh, but they do also get to evaluate this immediately. Uh, this is going to have them count up all of their harvest icons. They currently just have the two right here, and then they get to take that number of resources out of the reserve. Well, it looks like that's going to bring them up to four total, and now they can finish out their turn by drawing a card. Looks like this one is going to be the Taj Mahal. So this says that I believe for every set of one of each of these four cards, they are, uh, the person who has this is going to get two culture. Next up, it's going to be the blue player's turn, and they've decided to invest over here in the frigate, and they're going to do it with all three of their resources. With that done, that means that we can now take our turn, and we have nine resources. And I feel like it probably makes sense for us to try and snipe out this frigate. With so many resources, that is a pretty dominant position. We're obviously going to be feeding the blue player with quite a few resources by doing that. But this frigate, uh, well, currently we have a single trade icon, so it would add us a single shield and then two more attack value. 
But the bigger thing concerning this is if the blue player takes this, then they will gain the ability of these extra couple attacks. And we know they have Genghis Khan, who is going to um, definitely motivate them to try and do a lot more attacking. Now, we're pretty good on defense already, but I suppose having a good offense is a pretty good defense as well. And we should probably leverage our huge amount of resources. So let's go ahead and do the snipe. We're going to spend three resources, which are going to go right over here to the blue player. And now these resources are going to come down here. The blue player currently has one uh, trade icon in their area. So that means they get to take one of these into their spot. And now they get to take half of these rounded down. So that will be three more resources. So the blue player definitely did well as far as going from three resources up to seven. But now we, of course, get to take this frigate. This is going to get slid over the knights, which is totally fine, considering that is a once-per-game attack. So now we can put this here, and we have an ongoing ability. Uh, that means we are pretty powerful. This castle is still uh, doing lots of work for us, considering that means that this frigate has two base attack, but then another one based off of the castle right here. So we're actually a really strong force to be contended with. Uh, we're probably going to be pretty interested in trying to pick up some more of the attack cards. At this point, let's now finish off our turn by drawing a card, and it looks like this is going to be a military academy. Uh, this is, I guess, kind of similar to the castle, except it's a little bit more offensive. It has a couple of the attack symbols down here, and it provides defense based off of the amount of government that the person has. All right, it's now the green player's turn, and they have decided to invest over here in the Taj Mahal. They're just going to spend two of their money. Uh, they figure that, uh, well, there is lots of money in both of their opponent's piles. I think they're going to go to three. They're going to spend three of their money over here. They don't think either of us are all that interested in grabbing this one. I guess we are somewhat interested in it. So if we were to spend three, maybe that would be worth it. You know what? The green player, the more they think about it, they really would like this Taj Mahal. They're going to spend all four of their money. Maybe they're going to be overspending, but they are going to get some back as an investor bonus if they are indeed able to collect this on a future turn. At this point, it looks like it's now the blue player's turn, and they've decided they would like to invest over here in the military academy. Uh, this time around, they have quite a bit of resources available to themselves, and they've decided that they would really like to get this one. And they can see that we currently have six, which is kind of left over from our massive investor bonus a couple turns ago. And they've decided to go ahead and spend five of their resources. Now, it's important to note that these resources are not worth anything at the end of the game. They are purely just a uh, resource to be traded back and forth as the players are trying to jockey and grab the cards they need. Now, the blue player is a little worried this might be an overcommittal. They're pretty sure we're not going to spend five to take this, but that we might have spent four to take this. So um, they've gone ahead and run those numbers and decided to stick with this. So their turn is now done, and now we can take our turn. Well, it is our turn to go, and we could technically afford to buy this out, but I think that is really pricey. Instead, I think I really like the idea of drawing more random cards from the top of the deck. Let's go ahead and invest over here on Christopher Columbus. And considering we have a lot of resources and our opponents don't have that many, we can definitely lean on that aspect. So I figure let's go ahead and spend three of our resources so that we cannot be sniped. And another great thing about this is the investor bonus on this one is uh, culture, of which we still have quite a few cultures. So we're probably going to be able to make a bunch of these resources back. So yeah, we've gone ahead and invested over there. And now the green player can take their turn. After considering whether or not they want to harvest right now, they've decided they're going to take the Taj Mahal. So this one is going to come into their area, and the four uh, resources that they spent are going to come into the supply. The Wonder can now tuck right down here, and they do get an investor bonus of industry. When they look around, it looks like they have two industry symbols right now within their area, so they're going to get two resources back for that. And then they can go ahead and clean up for the end of their turn and draw the top card, and it looks like this one is going to be Steam Power. This is a knowledge card, and it looks like immediately you count up the number of the industry symbols that you have, and you can take that number of resources from the supply. So this could be really good or really bad, depending on what the supply is looking like when you grab that card. Okay, well, at this point, the blue player can now go, and they have decided just to go ahead and cash in and grab this military academy. All five of these resources are going to get put down here. Uh, they're definitely concerned they might have overpaid there. It's pretty likely that they did, but either way, they really wanted to make sure that they grabbed this card. This is now going to get added into their tableau, and it's going to cover up the temple, so that's two less culture that are now showing. But they have also just gained two military for the card itself, and then two more defense for the uh, two government cards that they have. Also, they invested in this card. It looks like the investor bonus is going to be based off of industry, and they currently have one right here, and then a second one right there. So they're going to get two resources back for that. 
As always, this means they can grab these from the supply, and that's going to bring them back up to four resources, and now they can finish out their turn by drawing a card. It looks like this one is going to be a cannon. Uh, so this is just a straight-up attack. It looks like it hits a knowledge or a construction card. It has two attack value printed on it as well, and it gives an investor bonus for science. All right, it's once again our turn, and it looks like we could either grab Christopher Columbus right here, or we could do a pretty decent harvest action. There are currently eight resources here in the supply, and we still have two harvest icons in our area that we've had uh, essentially all game long. So I think let's go ahead and do that, because we'll add two to here, and then we'll take half of them, which would be five more resources into our area. That'll bring us up to eight resources, which means we could potentially snipe out some of the cards that our opponents might be investing in. Also, we can see that, um, especially the green player right here, is very low on resources. And if we do a uh, harvest action, then we'll take a bunch of these, and they'll be able to take less for themselves. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to grab two of these, put them here into the uh, supply, and then, of course, we get to take half of them. We'll, of course, add these into our own little supply, and then it is now the green player's turn. Uh, so they have a decision. They could also harvest, and they also have two... Um, harvest icons in their area, I suppose if they did that, then they would take three of these resources over here. Uh, they could, of course, also go ahead and invest in one of these cards, although they only have two resources right now. Yeah, after considering these options, they have decided they're also going to do a harvest action, even though it's not going to be anywhere near as good as the one that we just did. So yeah, they have two of those icons, so two more are going to come from the reserve over here into the supply, and then they get to grab half, and that will be, it looks like, three of them. This is going to finish out their turn, and now blue can go. It looks like they currently have four resources available to themselves, and they've decided they'd like to do an investment action, and they're going to do it over here onto the steam power spot. And considering the amount of resources that we have right now, uh, they're just going to put all four of their resources in here. They know that we could easily snipe that out, and if we do snipe it, then the blue player will have tons of resources available to themselves. So they're going to go ahead and put all of these right there, and now we can take our turn, and it looks like we are beginning things off with eight resources available to ourselves. Well, when it comes to figuring out what we're going to do, I think it's probably just between uh, taking Christopher Columbus here or sniping out this steam power. Uh, it makes no sense to harvest. We have tons of resources already, and the steam power over here gives the player two of the industry icons, and then also allows them to take from the supply uh, a number of resources that equal to the number of the industry icons that they have. Now, currently, we only have one of these industry icons, but if we took this, we would then have three, which means we would take three back from the supply if we were to take this. Um, now, there is, of course, this uh, science investment bonus, but we wouldn't get that. And I think that's probably worth it. I mean, it doesn't make sense to have tons of resources without using that uh, to push people around. So let's go ahead and snipe this card out. This means we have to pay four resources over to the blue player. And then, of course, these four are going to go into the supply. Next up, when we come to the blue player's tableau, we see they just have a single one of the trade icons, which means they get to grab one of these resources from the supply, and then they get to take half rounded down from the supply. So in this case, it didn't super matter. They're going to get three more here, and they have effectively doubled their resources, which is pretty nice for them, although they, of course, did not gain access to this card. So this investment token is going to go back, and then we can finish things off by adding steam power into our tableau. We're going to cover up astronomy, but that's okay. That was just a one-time effect. And now uh, we, of course, get to count up our industry. It's one, two, three. Oh, I didn't notice these over here when I was talking before. Never mind. We <laughs> we didn't have one. We already had four. So that just means we have one, two, three, four, five, six industry tokens total. Uh, so that means that we can take up to six uh, resource tokens from the supply. But unfortunately for us, it looks like there are only four here, so we're not going to get our full amount, but still, uh, that's fine. We spent four, and we got four back, so we've got a whole bunch of resources available to ourselves, although so does the blue player. So as you can see, our the amount of resources in this ecosystem has definitely been growing as more harvest actions have happened. So um, things have been getting more expensive as we have been going throughout the game. All right, we now uh, can finish out our turn by going ahead and drawing the top card. It looks like this one is a seaport. It's a construction card, and it just gives you a variety of icons. That's a science, an industry, as well as a culture, uh, all three of which happen to be the icons that match up for investor bonuses. It's also got two trade icons down at the bottom, which makes sense. And now the green player can go ahead and take their turn. At the moment, there are currently zero resources available in the supply, so they're definitely not going to do a harvest action, and they have decided instead uh, they're going to do an invest action. I guess they could hypothetically uh, snipe Christopher Columbus out from us, but uh, this random card could really mess up with some of the things they have in their area because, of course, that random card is going to cover up something in the tableau. 
So instead, they're going to go over here and they're going to invest in Napoleon. And they've decided to go big. They can see that uh, they currently are the poorest out of all of the people in the game with only five resources. And this investor bonus of um, culture will get them some of this resources back. So they've decided to go really hard on it. Looks like they're very interested in taking uh, this card. And now their turn is done and the blue player can go. It looks like they've decided they want to invest over here in bureaucracy. And they're going to do it for a relatively modest three resources. They're feeling somewhat confident that uh, neither of their opponents are interested in taking this away from them. Uh, if the green player took it, they would lose out on some of their defense. And if we took it, we would lose out on three industry symbols, which is pretty significant. So uh, that's going to be their turn. And now we can go. And when we consider that we have eight uh, resources available to ourselves, we could snipe either of our opponents. And I wonder, I mean, bureaucracy would allow us to get another uh, government later on but it would erase three of those um, industry symbols, and those are certainly nice to have around, although we can tell that the blue player also is going to be, uh, be able to do really good things with the bureaucracy. Uh, maybe they slightly underbid on this because we are a little bit more interested in, in it than they might have thought, and I think we could, of course, also just take uh, Christopher Columbus right here. Uh, it won't immediately cause us to overwrite something, and that would allow us to potentially do an investment later, I think that when you consider this, we're not actually crazy about this bureaucracy card. Let's go ahead and just take uh, Christopher Columbus. We can decide at the, the right moment to go ahead and use this to take a random card from the top of the deck. So we'll probably wait until we get at least to the age of four cards because those are going to be better. And then this money is going to enter the uh, very meager supply right here. And then when Christopher Columbus enters our tableau, we're of course going to have to get rid of uh, Justinian II. We can only ever have one leader at a time. So now we can add this over here. And we did invest in it. And the investment bonus uh, applies to culture. So we can see we have two culture right here as well as two right here. So that's four culture total, which means we can take up to four back from the supply. So we'll get to take all of these. We now have, it looks like, 11 resources available. So just tons of resources. We uh, uh, can definitely use this for a bit of leverage. Also, potentially to uh, invest a whole bunch on future turns. So uh, we're now done with our main action, and now we can go ahead and refill this card row. Looks like this is going to be a printing press. This is a knowledge card, and it says that you immediately take resources from the supply equal to the number of uh, science symbols that you have. Well, right now this is rather weak because we've kind of been hoarding supplies a lot recently, but either way, that goes right there, and now the green player can take their turn. Um, at the moment, they could do an, uh, a horrible harvest action, but uh, they've decided to do something pretty obvious. They're just going to go ahead and take Napoleon, which is going to bring all five of these resources back into the supply. Napoleon's then going to come over here and oust Aristotle, so Aristotle is now out of the game, and it looks like Napoleon's investor bonus is based off of culture. So when they look around, they can see that they have three culture over here all on this monastery. So that means they get to take uh, three resources back as their investor bonus. Uh, also, they're going to do an attack on everybody, and anybody that they successfully attack is going to lose a government. The thing is, though, that the green player is the weakest of all of us. They were likely taking this so that they could get a little bit of defense with these attack symbols, but also to stop them from being attacked themselves. At the moment, their attack value is one, two, three, uh, four, it looks like. Yeah, just four. And uh, the blue player's defense is currently 10. And our defense, I believe, is also at 10. So uh, this is definitely not going to be a successful attack. But either way, they can take that investor bonus of three. This means they now have three resources available to them total, and we can go ahead and finish out their turn by drawing a card. Looks like this one is going to be uh, Mercantilism. All right, so this just gives three trade icons as well as a permanent uh, attack icon down here. And now it's time for the blue player to take their turn, and they're simply going to grab Bureaucracy right here. When this comes down here, it looks like the bureaucracy is going to replace the theocracy, and that means they're also going to lose out on the one attack value per wonder. So that's three attack that they just lost, and three defense, because uh, attack symbols also count for defense. But this military academy does give them one defense for every government card they have. So they did gain a government card, I suppose, so they only lost two defense there overall. It's not amazing for them, but they do also get culture at the end of the game for having lots of government, and bureaucracy does lead into more government. So overall, they're pretty happy with that, and it looks like the investor uh, bonus right here is culture. So when they look around, they can see that they have just the one culture, it looks like, so they'll get one resource back. This will bring them up to six resources total, and they can finish out their turn by drawing a card. Ooh, looks like this is the last of the age three cards. 
And this one is the Himeji Castle. <laughs> uh, this one is going to give victory points for having military cards at the end of the game. And it's uh, pretty fighty as well. It's got three of those attack symbols right there. All right, it's once again our turn, and we have 11 resources available. So we could do really any investing we want to, all told. But we've also revealed the first of the Age 4 cards, and part of me feels like maybe we should just use Columbus right now uh, and draw whatever this is. It's probably going to be pretty powerful for us, and that might help us uh, decide which one of these we do want to invest in as we go forward. Also, it's going to, um, I guess, keep the resources trapped in our area and keep us in a powerful position to try and snipe things out from our opponents. So let's go ahead and roll with that. So that means we're going to get rid of Columbus and draw and take whatever this top card is. That means we're going to get... <laughs> Albert Einstein. Okay, well, that's actually really nice. We replaced a leader for another leader. It looks like this one is an endgame leader. Actually, it's going to give us one culture for every knowledge that we have, and we already have four knowledge cards, so that worked out really well for us. Uh, it looks like it also has three science listed up there, and we're, of course, not going to get the investor bonus. Another thing to keep in mind is that as soon as this either um, a level four card either hits this row or is taken by anyone, which we just took this one, that means we have now entered age four. So it looks like we're going to have to discard any age two cards from the row, but there are none. And there is one other uh, consequence for entering a new age, and I have not mentioned that before. Uh, sorry about that. And that involves the harvest action. Now, whenever you do a harvest action, remember you take tokens from the reserve into the supply equal to your harvest amount, and then you take half of these tokens rounded down. But there's one more stipulation, and that is that you will keep taking tokens until you have taken an amount that matches the current age. So that means on the green player's last turn, uh, when they had zero tokens, it was the third age, which means they would have guaranteed gotten three resources for that harvest action, and you make up for the difference by just drawing more out of the reserve into the supply. So at this point going forward, that means a harvest action is going to give each player a bare minimum of four resources because we're in the fourth age. And I think I should have mentioned that earlier in the playthrough. Sorry about that. All right, it's now the green player's turn, and I think they're actually going to do a harvest action, just like I just mentioned. Uh, they only have three resources, which is really not much compared to their opponents, and they would like to have more to be able to put in a more decent bid. They currently have two harvest tokens, so that means they're going to take two out of the supply, and then they take half rounded down, so that's going to be three of these. And like I just mentioned, it is the fourth age, so that means they're going to go ahead and take the fourth token from the supply, because they're guaranteed to get four. And now they have seven resources, which is more than the blue player, I suppose. Uh, not quite as much as us, although if our opponents continue to not actually invest, then we are going to be forced to invest and start spending some of our huge hoard of resources. Okay, so now the blue player can take their turn. And they, of course, could also do a harvest action and get up to uh, four more or get four more resources, but they're not going to do that. They're definitely going to be investing in something. Actually, it looks like I just lied because they are not going to be investing. They're instead going to use their bureaucracy. They like the look of this mercantilism right here, and this bureaucracy is not really doing much for them. They like the idea of having lots of governments, and this one is out. So they're going to go ahead and use this ability, which is going to allow them to go ahead and grab one of the non-invested governments. So that means that uh, mercantilism is going to come into their area. It'll stack over there, and that's going to gain them a military power, which they like. Uh, although they, of course, don't get this investor bonus because they grab the card via an action. And now they'll finish out their turn by drawing the top age four card. It looks like this one is tank. Uh, it has three damage down at the bottom. And if the person who gets successfully attacked loses a wonder. So that is a very uh, powerful effect. I guess tanks can definitely blow some things up. And on that note, it's now our turn. So we can go ahead and decide what we're going to do. And I think we are definitely going to be investing, unlike the blue player last turn. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of our options. Now there are two of these attack cards out right now. And we have seven attack power. So if we were to take this cannon, for instance, that would add two to that. So we'd be at nine. But then we still have this castle uh, hanging out doing work for us. So every military card we have gains an extra attack. So that means that this would actually uh, add three attack. And we would have a ten power attack. And that is currently not enough. Uh, both of our opponents have a defense of ten. But if we look over here to the tank, this adds three attack power plus one again for the castle if we still have it. And that would get us to uh, 11 attack power. And again, both of our opponents are at 10. So if we were to bid on this tank then and we were to successfully attack with it, we could hit either of our opponents and it would destroy a wonder. Now at the moment, I'm most worried about the blue player over here. It looks like they've got a pretty good uh, set of engine -y things going on. I'm not so sure about the green player currently. So going right here would be pretty nice. Uh, but it looks like the blue player has six uh, resources. So the only way to do this to st and stop the blue player from sniping us 
would be to bid seven of our 11 resources, which is a lot. Now, resources are meant to be spent. Like, we, do, we shouldn't necessarily hoard them. But we do have another good option, and that is this... Um, Himenji Castle, I think it's called. I'm sure it's not called that. Either way, uh, this one right here would give us culture at the end of the game for our uh, military cards, and we currently have three military cards. And this uh, wonder itself adds three uh, uh, military attack value to our area, so we'll become even more potent going forward. Now, this also has a uh, industry symbol right there, and currently we have six industry symbols in our tableau, so we can actually spend a lot of uh, resources over here and not really worry about it too much. So I think maybe we should try and put on that pressure. Uh, and in that case, since we're going to get six back and we can see that even seven would allow us to be sniped, maybe we should put eight of our resources over here, knowing that we'll get uh, six of them back on the next turn. I really would like to grab this, and the green player would probably also like to take it, considering they have the pyramids, which give them uh, culture for having wonders. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll invest over here, and we'll put eight of our resource tokens down, which is most of them, but that's okay. We'll get uh, most of these back uh, when we go ahead and collect this card. All right, so that finishes up our turn, and now the green player can go, and they are a little bit bummed because they were hoping to gain access to this uh, wonder right here, and we made it a snipe-proof uh, price. So instead, they're going to go ahead and do an investment, and when they consider their options and the fact that uh, currently their top military card is providing them with uh, two shields, they don't really want to go after either of these reds. Instead, they're going to go over here to the seaport. Now, they can tell that both of their opponents have really nice construction uh, cards that they don't want to cover up, We've got this castle, which is currently giving us three military strength, and the blue player has this uh, military academy, uh, which is giving them four uh, defense because they have four government buildings. Because of that, the green player is betting that we're probably not going to be that invested in trying to take this away from them, and they're just going to go for the minimum bid. They're going to put one uh, coin down there and hope that that is able to ride on through. They're kind of um, staking quite a lot on trying to get in our heads, but either way, that's going to finish out their turn, and now the blue player can take their turn. Well, they can definitely see the writing on the wall when it comes to our bid over here and becoming much more powerful. So they've decided they're going to actually be the ones to bid on the tanks. And I think maybe in retrospect, we got a little bit too caught up with getting some points. Maybe we should have bid on tanks and guaranteed a successful attack on the blue player, but uh, we didn't. So instead, the blue player can now bid on the tanks and they want to make it snipe proof from us. Because of that, they're going to spend four of their resources. They're going to put those down right there. And it's true that the green player could potentially snipe this out, but they're feeling somewhat confident that green is probably not going to want to take this tank. Uh, so with that, the blue player's turn is now done, and now we can take our turn, and we have two options, essentially. Uh, well, three, I suppose. We could snipe out this uh, seaport, but we really don't want to lose that castle. I think the three military attack and the three defense that this provides is something that we should really keep coming on, and um, these uh, resource uh, uh, icons right here are not that interesting to us. So instead, we're not going to snipe that, but we could um, do a harvest action. It's the fourth age, so that would get us four resources, bringing us up to seven. Or we could, of course, just um, tank, uh, take this uh, castle right here. Nobody is in a position to try and snipe this stuff away from us, but we do know that when we take this castle, we're going to get a bunch of resources back, uh, more than four. So I think it doesn't make sense to harvest. Let's go ahead and grab this wonder. And then we can go ahead and add this into our tableau, giving us three more strength. And then we can activate that investor bonus. Uh, once again, that's going to be based off of industry uh, symbols. And it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So yeah, we can take six resources back, just like we counted out last turn. So when we consider the fact that we already had three, that's going to bring us up, back up to nine resources. So we're doing pretty well as far as uh, keeping up the pressure with this stuff. Although, of course, this is a little bit too late to be able to actually snipe this uh, tank away from the blue player, that is assuming that the blue player takes us on their next turn. Uh, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. We can now finish out our turn by drawing the top card. Looks like this is the Eiffel Tower. This is going to give one culture for every two industry symbols, and it has two industry symbols on it. And now it looks like it's the green player's turn. So they could potentially snipe us out, but they've decided they're pretty happy with grabbing this card for just a single um, resource. So they're going to go ahead and do this. This resource is going to go over here into the supply. And then the seaport is going to come over here and cover up one of the culture on this monastery, but it does have a culture itself. And then the investment bonus for this one is going to be industry. So it looks like they have one, two, three total industry. So that's going to be three more uh, resources as an investor bonus, which brings them up to nine total resources. They're now going to finish out their turn. They're going to draw a card. And it looks like this is democracy. 
it has three ongoing culture and then two science down the bottom. So if you have this at the end of the game, uh, this is just three victory points, which is pretty good. And it's now the blue player's turn. So they're pretty happy with uh, having this tank go all the way through, and they're certainly not going to leave it around because they can see that we uh, both their opponents have tons of resources now. Uh, so they're going to go ahead and take this card. All four of these resources will enter the supply. And it looks like this is actually going to be the first military card that they've taken all game. So they're going to put that right there, and the investor bonus is going to happen. This one is based off of science, but it looks like, yeah, they have just one science symbol there, so they will get one resource from the supply, and I'll just do that right now into their bank area. And now they can go ahead and activate this attack. So they can calculate their attack value, and again, this is going to be all of these spear and axe symbols. So it looks like they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total, so that's a nine damage attack which means that both of their opponents now need to calculate their defense. So over here for us, it looks like we have uh, one, two, three, four, five defense for these symbols right here, and then six, seven, eight when you apply the military bonus here, and then we have two shields down on the castle itself, so that's going to be uh, nine, ten. So we have, it looks like ten, oh no, actually, 11, 12, 13 for these attack symbols down here. So we are certainly safe, and now the green player over here can calculate. Looks like they're going to get a shield for every one of their um, harvest icons. They have two of those. So that's two shields there. Then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten right there on Napoleon. And that is it. So ten is definitely enough to block that attack as well. So the blue player does not successfully attack with that tank, but that wasn't really their goal. Instead, they're just happy that this tank was not used against them to hit any of their wonders. And there is one of the reason they wanted to do this attack, and that is Genghis Khan. They've had this leader for quite a while, but they haven't used him yet. And it again says that whenever they do a single attack, or when they attack uh, all of their opponents, they get to grab two resources from the supply. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And this is going to bring them up to five total resources, which is still definitely the underdog in the current uh, financial resource market out here. But either way, their turn is now done. Their action is done anyway. And they can finish out with a uh, card reveal to fill in the slot. It looks like this one is communism. So this one is really pretty fun. Uh, what happens is everybody is going to go ahead and put all of their resources into the supply, and then you divvy out those resources evenly. So this is definitely a card that, well, maybe the blue player would want to do at right now uh, in order to equalize out some of these uh, massive amounts of resources that people have. But of course, uh, they're a couple turns away from potentially doing that. So either way, the blue player's turn is now done, and now we can go. And I think when we start to consider all these different options, we have a couple different ways we could go. Now, if we were to take this cannon right here, we would be able to do an attack that would be able to get over the defenses of both of our opponents. But the only real benefit of the cannon is that it will destroy a knowledge or a construction card. And since it only hits one opponent, we would essentially be uh, making ourselves better versus one person. But if we just get a lot of points right now, then that's effectively like gaining points on both of our opponents. Currently, when we look at the different tableaus, we're in a pretty strong position. Both the uh, green and blue players are somewhat uh, similar in victory points, and we have a handful more than they do. So I think maybe we should just try and keep pushing on that lead. Because of that, uh, I think let's go after this wonder right here. Uh, this one is going to gain uh, one victory point or one culture for every two of these industry symbols. And we currently have six of those symbols, and this card itself adds two. So that means if we took this, we would then be up to eight symbols. Of course, that is if the game ended right now, the symbols can definitely change. But either way, that would be a four-point card for us currently, and I think that's definitely worth it. The other thing is that the investor bonus on this one is indeed a industry symbol, and we have six of those. So I think we should definitely spend six of our resources, but I think we should just spend all of them. We've got, uh, it looks like, nine total resources, and the green player also has nine. And we're a little worried that the green player might want to try and snipe this, so we figure we cannot make it snipe-proof, but we can certainly make it very painful if the green player does decide to do that. Uh, in the end, uh, we know that if we take this, we're going to get six of these back, so we're sort of spending three of our resources in order to do this. So yeah, let's go ahead and add all of that in right there. That's going to finish out our turn, and <laughs> barely fits. And now the green player can go. And after considering they're watching all this happen, they've decided they're going to go a little crazy. Um, and in particular, they're going to do this because they see this communism card coming up. They're going to snipe this. So that means that all nine of these resources are going to come back over into our area. And that means that all nine of these resources are going to go over here into the supply. They then, of course, get the Eiffel Tower. But we also now get to count up all of our trade icons and take that amount back before we take half of the supply. 
looks like currently we just have the single trade right there. So we do indeed get this one right here, and then half of the supply, it looks like, is going to be six more resources, which under most circumstances would seem really great, but we do see that communism card looming, and uh, maybe we should have counted that into our uh, analysis when we were trying to figure out what to do on our turn. Either way, we are now incredibly rich, uh, and the green player does get to put the Eiffel Tower into their tableau, but of course since they sniped it, they're not going to get the investor bonus. All right, the green player is now going to finish out their turn by drawing a card, and it looks like this is a factory. Um, wow, okay, so that just provides three uh, aggression attack symbols and three of the industry symbols down there. Okay, so their turn is now over, and the blue player now gets to go. And the thing is, the blue player does have this great mosque, which means they get points for having more of these governments. And their current government is mercantilism, which adds a bunch of trade symbols, but... They're not super crazy about these trade symbols, so instead, they're going to mix things up. They certainly don't like the fact that we have so much money, and they're just going to spend all of their resources on communism. Uh, they're going to do all of them because they know that communism is going to grab anything that they don't spend and put it back into the supply. And by doing this, they've essentially guaranteed that communism is going to happen. So that's going to be their full turn, and now we can take our turn, and we essentially need to consider. Uh, we know that communism is going to happen, so we can potentially spend a bunch of our money right now bidding on something else, or we could, of course, snipe out communism, uh, but um, right now we have, let's see, the constitutional monarchy, which is providing three of these industry symbols, although communism provides two, so it's not that big of a difference. So I suppose to a certain degree, we could just um, get ahead of it and snipe this card out so that we get the card, which does give us symbols, and we could just go ahead and lose all this money right now. Um, like I said, the, ops, uh, the other thing we could do is take this and spend a bunch of our money uh, just bidding on something else, but then we're going to lose the rest of it. And I guess when we consider that uh, this cannon would allow us to attack somebody, this uh, printing press would allow us to get more resources, I guess, as a way to rebound back, although all these are going to get split back up evenly amongst the players, and any remainder will be left over here, but that means there'll be a maximum of two uh, left in the supply, which is not a lot. Uh, we certainly don't want this factory because that will uh, erase our castle, although we do have a lot of attack power already, and I guess um, this uh, castle is currently giving us three attack power, and the factory itself gives three attack power, so maybe I'll take that back. Maybe this factory is pretty good for us, uh, although this democracy is really good. It comes in with uh, three victory points with the three culture right there, and our constitutional monarchy, again, has these industry symbols, and we did not pick up the Eiffel Tower, so they're not necessarily worth a lot of victory points. So instead, I don't know, maybe, uh, I guess um, this communism right here is just one point worth of symbols, and democracy is four points worth of symbols, because, and again, every non-culture symbol is one point. I figure, let's go ahead and just go over here. Uh, we will not um, uh, snipe this communism out, we'll instead do this democracy, and it looks like we don't really have to worry about uh, the amount of money that we put over here. Although, I suppose the more we spend over here, the less our opponents get when the communism happens. So that means if we were to spend all of our money, then the blue player would have to take communism, and then nobody would really... Oh, I guess they would split up from the stuff over here, but it wouldn't be that much. This is probably the best way to actually stall out and force our... Uh, and not let our opponents get a bunch of resources. So yeah, sorry for this long uh, turn here, but I think we're actually going to bid all of these resources, I'm not even sure how many it is right now, over here on Democracy. Well, it looks like all told, that is going to be 16 total resources over here, so definitely snipe-proof. And I just realized that the blue player actually forgot to put their uh, investor token down here on the communism spot. So yeah, our turn is now over, and now the green player can go. And they essentially don't have any options. Uh, well, they have one option, that is. Um, they have nothing to activate. They have no resources to go ahead and invest. So they have to do a harvest action. Uh, they currently have two harvest icons in their area. So they're going to take two out of the uh, reserve. And they're going to add those into the supply. And now they can get, to get to take half of these. Looks like there's eight total. So they get four. And again, since we're in the fourth age, they were going to get four as a minimum no matter what. And that is going to finish out their turn which means that Blue can now go, and they're in a similar situation. They could do a Harvest action as well, but they figure they'll just bite the bullet and go ahead and collect this Communism card right here. This is going to come over and replace Mercantilism, and it does have an Investor bonus based off of Culture. It looks like they currently have just the one Culture icon. Which does mean they take one for an investor bonus, but it doesn't super matter because, again, we now have to evaluate communism. So what this means is everybody is going to lose all of their money from their own personal areas. It's all going to go over here into the supply. 
and then they'll get split up evenly. It looks like there's 13 resources total, so that means each of us is going to gain four resources back. And this remainder is just going to stay over here in the supply. So with that, the blue player is now done with their actions. So they can finish off with drawing a card. It looks like this is going to be the Manhattan Project. All right, so this is one of the uh, very few uh, wonders that actually is not an endgame scoring thing. It's an attack all. So we can see that the wonder itself provides six shields, and it's an attack all on everybody, and uh, everybody who gets uh, hit by it is going to lose one of their wonders. Well, with that all completed, it can now go, uh, play now comes back to us over here, and I think let's just go ahead and take democracy. So that means this card is going to come into our area, and all 16 of these resources are going to spill over here into the supply. Democracy is now going to come over into our area and replace our constitutional monarchy, and it looks like the investor bonus for this one is based off of our culture. So we've got quite a bit of it now. That's one, two, three, four, five... Six, seven. So that means we get seven resources back. So I think we survived that communism relatively well. This means that we actually are going to end out our turn with 11 resources back. So yeah, <laughs> definitely a dominant position I think that we are still in. And we can now finish out our turn by drawing a card. Looks like this one is going to be Warplane. Uh, this has three military attack on it, and it's an attack all. And it hits a uh, knowledge or a construction card. All right, this means it's now the green player's turn, and they have decided with their uh, measly four resources over here that they're going to do a harvest action. They'd rather not invest in something and just have us blow it right out, so they have two harvest uh, tokens. That means they're going to grab two of these resources from the supply, and now they get to take half of these. That's going to be six total uh, supplies, uh, resources that is, so that means they have now gone up to ten, so almost as much as we have, and that's going to finish out their turn, so now blue can take their turn. And they've decided they're going to invest over here in the printing press. Uh, they only have four resources, so they've got, they're have they going to go ahead and uh, bid all of them over here. And that's going to finish out their turn. And now we can take our turn. And it looks like uh, we have, I believe, 11 resources total here. So we could potentially snipe out this printing press. Uh, we would not get the investor bonus, of course, but it does come with a couple science on it. And it uh, will cash out and bring us back resources for just having science. So that's kind of like an investor bonus right there. And having more cards is good, so I think let's go ahead and do it. We will snipe this, and that's going to send four money over here to the blue player. And then all four of this money is going to come down. Blue can now count up their trade icons, and it looks like they still just have this one that they started the game with which means they grab this resource right here and then half rounded down. So it looks like that's going to be four more resources. And then they're going to go ahead and bring this token back and we get to take the printing press. And it looks like this is going to cover up our steam power, which is fine by us. We again don't get the investor bonus, but this is going to activate and we can take a supply for every science we have. It looks like we currently have one, two, three, four. Yeah. Oh no, five, six, seven. Wow, seven total. Well, there's currently only five resources in the supply, so we're going to get five instead of seven, and that means that we have actually a pretty balanced set of resources amongst all of the players now, I think for the first time in a long time. Let's go ahead and round out our turn by drawing the top card, and it looks like this is Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, so the ongoing effect here says that they cannot attack, and they also cannot be attacked, and then Gandhi also provides three culture, which is three points at the end of the game. Just to clarify, if you do have Gandhi, you are allowed to take one of these attack cards, you just don't evaluate it. Alright, so our turn is now done, and Green can now figure out what they're going to do. And they've decided they'd like to invest over here in the Manhattan Project. They are going to go ahead and spend six of their resources. And now Blue can take their turn. And they've decided they're actually going to snipe this out. Uh, the green player maybe didn't put quite as many resources as they should have uh, in order to secure this. And the blue player does have this uh, great wall. They've had it all game long. And this is going to get them one culture for every two shields. And there are six shields over here on the Manhattan Project. And yeah, blue is going to go ahead and spend all six of these resources over here to the green player. And then, of course, they're going to get to grab this card. And all these resources are going to go over into the supply. Since green just got sniped, they can now count up all of their trade symbols, and it looks like they have just two over here. Which means they can take two back from the supply, and then they of course get to take half of the supply routed down, so that's two more. And now green just has a ton of resources over here. Next up, the Manhattan Project is going to come into the blue player's tableau, and this is an attack all on everybody. Uh, so their attack value right now is nine. 
And that means that both of their opponents now need to count up their defense. So it looks like over here we have 1, 2, and then this castle activation is going to give us 3, 4, 5, then 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. We have just a single trade icon right now. And then, of course, 12, 13, 14 down here for this castle. So 14 is easily more than 9, and we're fine. And now the green player over here is going to count theirs up. They have two of these harvest symbols, so that's uh, two defense there. Then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so they are also fine. This means, of course, that no one is going to have their wonders destroyed by the Manhattan Project, but the Genghis Khan ability is going to once again go off for the blue player, so that means they get to grab two resources from the supply. Fortunately for them, there are exactly two over here right now, so they can now go ahead and clean up on their turn. They'll draw the top card from the deck, and it looks like this one is Stock Exchange. It has two science and two industry, as well as three trade down on the bottom. Okay, it's once again our turn, and I think when we look at all these different options, these two construction cards are the ones that are most appealing to us. Obviously, Gandhi has three points listed on him, but remember, we have Albert Einstein, who gives us points for our knowledge cards, and we have five knowledge cards, so this is already going to get us five points right there. So instead, I think when we look at these two, we know that whichever one we take is going to overwrite this castle. Now, if we took the factory, then right now our castle is giving us plus three military for our three military cards, and the factory would overwrite that exactly, so that would be fine. But over here at the stock market, this actually gives seven symbols as opposed to the six over here for the factory. Also, the stock market gives a whole bunch of uh, bonuses over here for some of the investor bonus type things, but I think overall grabbing this factory is going to be the thing we want to do. When we look closer at the card, we can see the investor bonus is going to be based off of industry. The card itself has three of them, and we have three already in our tableau. So I think let's go ahead and bid at least six. But also, we don't want the green player to be too incentivized to snipe this out from us. This would be pretty good for them as well. So let's go ahead and maybe make it eight. The green player could obviously pay that out, but if they did, then we would have a gigantic amount of resources on our next turn. Uh, so I think that's probably good, although we do... I suppose have a trade, and we're going to be getting six of these back. I, I'm a little bit worried. The green player did just get sniped. Let's go ahead and play very cautious. Let's throw two more into there. With that, our turn is now done, and the green player has decided they would like to invest over here in Gandhi. I think they are uh, over being uh, bullied around or being worried about being bullied around, and they certainly have enough resources to make sure this happens. And in fact, they look around and they decide they're going to go ahead and put six resources down so that this is a snipe-proof bid. This means it's now the blue player's turn, and they're just going to invest over here in the stock exchange, and they're going to do it with all five of their resources. This means it's once again our turn, and I figure we may as well go ahead and collect this factory. So we'll take our token back. All of these uh, resources are going to get added over here into the supply, and then we can add the factory into our tableau. So this means that uh, this castle that's done so much work for us throughout the game is no longer adding uh, military benefit, but the factory is just taking over for those three right there. The investment bonus is going to be based off of industry, and it looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 total. This means 6 of these resources will come back into our area. And we can finish out our turn by drawing the top card, and it looks like this one is mechanized farming. It has 3 agriculture at the bottom, and uh, just like several of the other ones we've seen, it pulls uh, resources out of the reserve. And now the green player can take their turn, and they've decided they're just going to go ahead and claim Gandhi here. Since this is a new leader, that means that Napoleon is going to go away, and Gandhi comes into place, so that's going to be three culture at the end of the game, which is pretty good for them, and they can no longer attack anybody, but they also are safe against other people's attacks. So the uh, investor bonus right here is based off of culture, and we can see down here they have one, two, three, four, five, six total. Well, that worked out pretty well for them, considering they bid six to take the card. They can now finish out their turn by drawing the top card from the deck, and it looks like this is going to be the last of the age four cards. And this one is computers. So this one is similar to other ones of these knowledge ones that we've seen. It allows you to grab resources from the supply. This means it's now the blue player's turn, and their only decent option is going to be grabbing this card right here. So they'll go ahead and pull out their investment. And then the stock exchange is going to get added into their tableau. This is going to overwrite the military academy, which was providing them with five uh, defense. But they're okay with that, considering they picked up this Manhattan project recently. So that goes in right there. And now their investor bonus is based off of industry. It looks like they have one, two, three, four, five, six. When you consider the fact that they only spent five resources on that card, this means they actually made some resources on that deal. At this point, they can finish out their turn by drawing the top card, and this means that we are now officially entering Age 5. 
So the first thing that happens is we're going to have to clear off any H3 cards, and it looks like this cannon is going to get cleared away. And now we can go ahead and see what this card is. This one is Satellites. So this one is kind of like uh, Astronomy that we saw earlier. It lets you draw the top card from this deck, and it provides a couple of defense. And now the other card to come out is going to be John Lennon. So this one allows you to activate it and get rid of one of your military cards in order to take a non-invested card out here from the main tableau. It, of course, also has four uh, victory points with culture there on top of the card. All right, this means it's now our turn, and I think our decision is pretty simple. Uh, we have Angkor Wat, which is going to get us victory points for our harvest symbols, and we have Albert Einstein that gets us victory points for our knowledge cards. So let's go ahead and invest over here in mechanized farming. And we know that we have seven of the science symbols in our area, and uh, we have eight resources. So I figure let's just go ahead and spend all of these over here. That's going to finish out our turn, and now green gets to go, and they've decided they'd like to invest over here in satellites, and they're going to put in a snipe-proof amount. Looks like the blue player has six resources, so they're going to put in seven. This means blue can now take their turn, and they have decided they're going to go ahead and invest over here in John Lennon. Now, they have six resources available to themselves, and they're only going to put two down. Uh, they know that the green player could potentially snipe this out, but if they did that, then uh, the green player would not be taking the uh, satellites over here, and it's very likely that the blue player would be able to swing back around and snipe the satellites out from the green player, and the blue player really did want the satellites. So blue is kind of leaning on uh, that thought that green will probably not snipe this out because of that. Also, this would erase the Gandhi card that green already has. So the blue player's turn is now done, and now we get to go. And I think let's just go ahead and cash out and grab our mechanized farming. Mechanized Farming now gets added into our tableau, and it looks like our investor bonus is based off science. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven science available to us right now, and then we can may as well evaluate this as well. This says that we get to pull uh, resources from the reserve equal to our current harvest amount, and it looks like we now have one, two, three, four, five. So we first grab seven from the supply, and then we get to grab five from the reserve. All told, we have 12 resources now, and we can go ahead and fill in this slot, and it looks like this card is going to be Capitalism. This is another government, and it has an endgame scoring of one culture for every trade icon that the player has. The green player can now take their turn, and they do have the option of sniping out John Lennon, but uh, just like the blue player thought, that is not something they're interested in doing. Instead, they want to lock down grabbing the satellite. They're now going to add that into their tableau, covering up Irrigation, which did not have an ongoing effect. And it looks like the investor bonus on this one is based off of science. And they currently have just the one science. So they'll get one resource for that. And then as a added ability for the satellites, they get to draw and take whatever the top card is on the draw stack. So they'll first grab the one resource, bringing them up to eight. And now they get to take whatever this card is. And it looks like it is nuclear power. That's got four science symbols on it, as well as four industry symbols. It looks like this is going to cover up the seaport, but uh, I think the green player is pretty happy about that, considering they have the Eiffel Tower, which does give them points based off of their industry symbols. That worked out pretty well for them. Okay, we can now finish off green's turn by drawing the top card, and it looks like this is the Apollo program. So this has no symbols of its own, but it does give victory points for science. This means it's now the blue player's turn, and they're going to go ahead and acquire John Lennon. It looks like this is going to kick out Gandhi, and now John Lennon has an investor bonus of culture. So it looks like they currently have one, two, three, four, five total culture at this point. So that's going to be five more resources back. And then, of course, they can activate this potentially on a future turn to try and grab another card from the center row. It looks like that's going to bring the blue player back up to nine resources total. And now they can finish out their turn by drawing the top card from the deck. And it looks like this one is going to be Fighter Jet. It attacks everybody. It has five military symbols on it. Uh, so it'll go right there. And you may notice that this card is face up. Now, the internet is a double-sided card. So it's always going to be the second to last card. And the one underneath that is the future. So that means we're getting very close to the end of the game. Again, that is going to happen uh, at the end of a turn whenever the future is either acquired by somebody or enters this row. Okay, this means it's our turn, and the game's getting very close to ending, and I think we have a pretty obvious play. This Apollo project would be really good for us. We have seven science symbols right now, so that is worth seven points to us. So let's go ahead and invest over here, and I think we want to make sure this is a snipe-proof amount, uh, specifically from the green player. 
The blue player right now has, it looks like, three science available, so this would be worth three points to them. Uh, the green player has, it looks like, about five, but also the green player wants to take wonders. So I suppose the blue player currently has nine resources, green has eight, so let's just go ahead and put ten of our resources in here so that we are sure that neither of these players can snipe this away from us. Again, these resources are worth nothing at the end of the game, so I figure we may as well spend them. With that completed, our turn is now over, and the green player can go. And unfortunately, they can kind of see the writing on the wall. With just two cards left over and them currently not investing anything, it's very unlikely that they're going to be able to cash in on anything they do this turn, but they figure they may as well go ahead and invest over here. Uh, they're going to use all eight of their resources because capitalism would be quite nice for them. They're just pretty convinced they're not actually going to be getting another turn. So all of these resources are going to go over here, and now the blue player has their chance to go. They have the ability to use John Lennon. It would allow them to throw away this tank in order to go ahead and take any non-invested card that's out here in the middle. But when they look at their different options, they realize that they really actually like capitalism. And fortunately for the blue player, they have nine resources and the green player was only able to put eight in here. So blue is instead going to go ahead and snipe. That'll move all of these over here. And then of course, all of this is going to get added into the supply. Blue then gets to grab the capitalism card. And it looks like this is going to overwrite their communism, and of course they don't get the investor bonus for this, so their action is done. And this means we can perform cleanup, pulling out the internet card. So again, this is double-sided. It provides just a ton of science as well as a ton of trade. And now we can go on to our turn, and we can see that the future is the top card in the tray. Now the future does have six victory points printed on it, but you can pretty much only get the future if you play a card that lets you pull a card out from the deck, because as soon as it goes out onto the main area, the game is going to end. So in this case, I think it's in our best interest to just end the game. We're going to go ahead and pull back our investment token and put all of these resources here into the supply. That's going to let us grab the Apollo program, which we can then add into our tableau, and it looks like the investor bonus is based off of industry. We have one, two, three, four, five, six total industry. So we'll go ahead and take that from the supply, and I did mention that resources aren't worth anything at the end of the game, but they are the second tiebreaker, so there's a slight chance that this will be important. And now when we finish our cleanup, we go ahead and take the future. It's now going to enter the card row, and with that, the game has now officially ended. Alright, let's go ahead and start counting up our final scores, and we'll begin with ourselves. Now the first thing to note is that this card right here is obsolete with that little circle with a slash, so we will not gain this bonus in endgame scoring. And now let's go ahead and count up our culture. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, then six, seven, and that's it for base culture tokens. So that's seven points right there. Then we can count up the rest of the icons that we have, and we'll divide that by two, and then we'll see how many points that gets us. And it looks like all told we have 32 of the other icons, so that cut in half is going to give us 16 more points. And now we can go ahead and look at our uh, leader as well as our wonders. Now, Albert Einstein is going to give us one culture for every one of our knowledge cards, and it looks like we currently have six knowledge cards, so that is going to be six victory points for ourselves. And then we have Angkor Wat gives us one culture for every one of our harvest uh, symbols. We have five of those, so that's five points right there. The Apollo program gets us one culture for every science we have, and it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so seven points right there. And lastly, the Himiji Castle is going to get us one culture for every one of our military cards, so that is going to be three there. So all told, our final score is 44. And now let's come over here and see how the green player did. So first things first, let's count up their base culture. It looks like they have one, two, three, four, five total. And now we can count up the rest of their icons. And it looks like they have 24 total, so they can cut that in half and get 12 points. And now let's go ahead and look at uh, their wonders and leader. Well, uh, Mahatma Gandhi does not give them any specific endgame points. So instead, we have the pyramids, which gets them one point per wonder. They were only able to get three wonders, so that's going to be worth uh, three points to them. And then we have the Taj Mahal, which gets them two points per full set of these four types of cards they have. It looks like they have two full sets right there, so that's going to be four more points right there. And lastly, the Eiffel Tower gets them one culture for every two of their industry tokens. And it looks like they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total. So that's going to look like four more points. Well, once this is all totaled up, they unfortunately ended the game with only 28 points, so nowhere near our score just yet. So let's now go ahead and see how the blue player did. Let's first check their base culture icons. It looks like they have one, two, three, four... And then a fifth one right there. 
Uh, now they can count up all of their other icons. And it looks like they have 29 of those total, so they'll cut that in half and then round down. So that is going to get them 14 more points. And now they can calculate the points they're going to get for these wonders. So first of all, there's the Great Wall, which gets them one culture for every two shields that they have. It looks like they currently have two right here, as well as six along there. And that's all of it, so that's eight total. So that's going to be four points for the Great Wall. Now we have the Great Mosque, which gets them one culture per government card that they have. It looks like they have six of those total, so that's going to be a six-point wonder. Then the Manhattan Project does not actually have any endgame points. And lastly, the Hanging Gardens gets them one culture per construction card they have, and they have four of them. And when we add all that up, they end the game with a score of 33. So that means that we have won the game with a rather dominant score of 44 to blue in second place with 33. Green comes in third with 28, and that completes a full three-player game of the flow of history. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Obviously, it was a little bit more lopsided than I maybe would have liked going into it. Uh, a score of 44 to the lowest score being 28 is a pretty big disparity, but I think overall, uh, us as the red player did play the game rather well, and we also had some pretty lucky things happen to us, especially near the end of the game. In particular, when we uh, cashed in Christopher Columbus to take a random card and it ended up being Albert Einstein, that was a huge swing for us because we already had a bunch of those knowledge cards, and so that just worked out really well. We didn't have to fight for that card. And then also uh, near the end of the game, we had a relatively easy opportunity to grab the Apollo project, which gave us victory points for the science that we had, which was already on um, Albert Einstein, as well as the mechanized agriculture that we were able to grab a little bit earlier on. So some things really uh, lined up well for us there at the end. Uh, and with regards to the green player who did not do very well at all, I feel like I did play that uh, role somewhat poorly. There were some picks there that they bid really heavily on that they probably didn't need that bad, and if they had been sniped and then gained a lot more resources, they would have been in a much better situation to take the cards that they really needed. Also, for some reason, the green player just ended up taking a lot uh, less cards than uh, we did as the red player. Uh, now, if you look there uh, right now, right there at the end, uh, in particular that Apollo project, having it come out in such a way that we could grab it like that ended up being seven points to us right there. And, uh, you know, the next uh, player up was the blue player at 33. And if we had seven less points, then we would have been at 37, which would have been a little bit more in the ballpark. So uh, all in all, I think this playthrough went rather uh, well. Um, the only thing that really uh, stuck out to me was uh, being a little annoyed about uh, forgetting that you don't get investor bonuses uh, when you snipe. And fortunately, that didn't end up actually mattering. And I put a little uh, corrective text on screen so that people will understand how that uh, works going forward. But yeah, either way, I think this was a good game and I don't think I have anything else to mention about it. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support these videos, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button down below as well as the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.